to the R, to the S, to the H, to the O, to the U, to the T, that fresh ass. <laughs> What's up? It's Wednesday night. We in the middle. We got everybody in here. Jay Kemp's back up. from taking Diddy overseas. Man. What's goody? Helping them drop off that plane in Antigua. That's man. good. So much, man. Hey, salute to everybody <laughs> up in here, man. It's <laughs> Wednesday night. You know what goes down. Real hip hop is back. You know what's salute, going on, man. Salute. Jay Kemp's up in here, man. Salute, Bebo. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Man, you already know. Hey, man, we talking real hip hop tonight, man. You know how it goes down, man. Jay all Kemp, ready. what's goody? What's happening, fellas? What's happening? Another Wednesday. Another and time another to one. pop it. Paul, oh, come on, no man. Diddy. Man. You still trying to Another find time Diddy, to man. get it popping. Yeah, yeah. Man. What's happening, Bebo P? Hey, man. Uh, feeling greater than a certain bad boy pacing around a Miami airport these days. Hey, had a We're about to get into this. Hey. We're about to get into that, Paul. Uh, how about yourself, mm -hmm. Ice Boy? What's good? Hey, man. Everybody's up in here. Real hip hop is back. Andre's up go. in here. Ah, God, what's great? Great. Right. What's happening? Antoine in here. I Antoine. saw you uh, in the top five Antoine. joint, man. We, yeah, we got a little All special right. guest tonight. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Busy right. B's in here. So Busy Luke, B. You know what I'm saying? B. Hey, man. What's we good? got a great show tonight. Uh, no Diddy. You know what I'm saying? First of all, <laughs> y'all know who had the first sound effect in the hot tub. You know what I'm saying? Sus. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, we're going to be talking about that tonight, man. Oh, shut up. Fellas and ladies, we are going to count down in three, two, oh, what? Mama! Mama! Mama Bear in the building. Uh, Shoot the power in the hundo in the building, man. Hey, right, scroll up to the top, right, man. Check dude. out the free game. Soon, he got all the news up there, man. Salute. Nah, honey, saying about time. Yeah, man. About time. I'm saying, hold up, man. Gritty coming oh, yeah. every time. Gritty coming. Gritty. You know what it is. Oh, yeah. You already know. <sighs> Got to do them both. Man, for we the do gritty, the flex, man. man. You know what I'm saying? You already know. Let's be clear, man. Hey, you already know what it is, man. Top five, oh, man. Already. Hey, Top websites, five, man. Got a dope, dope man. Podcast. Let's Absolutely. be clear, sure. hey, man. Uh, that, one of the best sure. dudes on, on 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 IG on IG on YouTube. Let's be clear. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Going crazy, man. Come one, on now. So basically, man, one of the best reviewers, man, in hip hop in the game, man. We got him on tonight. Special Salute. guest. Hey, man, y'all see the uh, uh, the cash app, man. You know what I'm saying? Pull out the money, Bebo P. Oh, man, you already know we I keep it. Money. Where the keep cash it deck, at? Baby. Hey, man, bring out the big bills. Where you know we like the money that jingles, at? but we oh, rather have the money that folds. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. The, let's not okay. guy top five tonight, man. He gonna <laughs> drop some jewels on y'all tonight, man. You already Paul. know. Hit the like and subscribe button as well if you haven't yet. Hey, Welcome to Fresh Out, the bad boys of this hip hop space, y'all. Yeah, already yeah, know. Y'all yeah, know what it is, man. What it is, the iceberg. What hey, we man, have tonight? Like I said, we got a great show tonight, man. But we got to bring on our guy, man. Top five, what's goody? Hey, yo, top, top five, five. website.com. You already know what's going on. How y'all doing? What's hey, good, man, bro? Goody, man. What's goody? Man, what's good? man, how about yourself, on, bro? I'm, I'm ready to talk some shit. Let's talk about these weak rappers. I mean, <laughs> good. Hit that sound effect for my boy. Hit that sound effect. Hey, man. You ready? On, man. <laughs> hey. Yes, sir. There you go. This is the thing, though, man. Like, again, uh, websites pinned to the top. If you, First of all, let's be clear. Let me turn the music off. If you are a MC, you know what I'm saying? You got an album. You got some stuff going on, man. Like, top five rap website, man. Uh, submit your music, man. Holler at your boy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, he's in there. But, again, like I said, if you... Been on the rock, you know what I'm saying? Like top five, <laughs> right. man, Troy. Appreciate I've been you watching. I've been watching your channel for a while, man. But the whole thing, man, and they coming through. Hold on, man. Antoine's the oh, show sponsor man. today with the file. Holla, man. Man, Antoine did it because Antoine. top fives in the building. Antoine, see, oh my gosh, he, he, he even guy. donated five. See, five he did it for the top five. Man, so appreciate you, Antoine. Five dollar, hey man, oh, where the love for hip hop come from, and how that turn into? Basically, you potting, man, uh, but also, man, the website, which is crazy, by the way. Right. Yeah, so so hip-hop, I mean, I feel like a lot of people got stories about how they got into hip-hop, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it was a certain artist, whether it was a certain time in hip-hop. But for me, like, my parents grew up listening to hip-hop. Mm. Hip-hop is, like, what, 52 years old right now? Yeah. And so that's, like, that's about my parents' age. Like, they about 52, 53. So they grew up listening to hip-hop, EPMD. Up EPMD, Slick Rick, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Poor Righteous mm -hmm. Teachers, Outkast. Come on. Come on. So for me, I just, when it was my time, I was already born on hip hop. Like when I was coming mm -hmm. of age, I was listening to, well, we didn't really listen to Nas or Jay like that. 
when I was growing up as a kid, but E40, uh, like I said, EPMD, Dre, Snoop. So when I came of age, it was just natural. So I, mm. I don't really have like a story about, about how I got into hip hop. I guess I'm just a, a, a product of hip hop naturally. Okay. Uh, was there uh, an artist or group that really like served as the, um, the linchpin for you? Uh, whether it's in or outside of hip hop that really s had you say, you know what? Yeah, this is this is something I got to dive into, you know, uh, when the time is right. Platform what plat with your top five platform or otherwise. Neil Big right. Charlotte. So with hip hop, with hip hop, with the music, when I was a kid, my favorite rapper was Tupac. I mean, obviously okay. from L.A., okay. like, Tupac from okay. he from Harlem right, or something or something. Go. But obviously he was the biggest artist in L.A. Uh, but when I actually came of age and started finding my own music, that was the blog era. So Kendrick, Cole, mm, mm, Wiz, Nipsey, mm, Freddie Gibbs, mm, you know, all that. Mm, okay. So that was the time I came of age. So those are the artists that when I was started picking my own music, that's who I was choosing to listen to. But um, okay. but as far as the website go, I started the website like in high school. You can go, if you look at the oldest post on my website, top5rapwebsite.com, um, it's probably like May 2010 or May 2011. So the website has been up because back then everyone had blogs. This is the blog era. You had two dope boys. You had not right, ill roots. Everybody had blogs. So I was like, let right. me create mine. Cause when I was in school, my friends used to always ask me like, what's the new music that's Cause I just always, I was up on like the blogs and what, and the shit that I was dropping. So they was always asking me like, yo, what, what new, what new music drop? What just came out? And I couldn't remember all of it, so I just created like a little WordPress and then just put the new music up I was fucking with. And then that just evolved into me reviewing music and then doing videos as the blog era phased out. And yeah, now we're here. Now I do a I do a live stream every week on Friday. Friday around 6 p.m. Pacific time. And yeah, I, I do album reviews. It's what my website on my, my YouTube is mainly based on. I mainly do album reviews okay. and album reactions. But I, I do do some social commentary or, and some commentary on these rappers. But I guess we'll get to that later, huh? Well, and this is the thing too, man. Like speaking of 2024, man. Like it's what is it? It's about to be April. You know what I mean? Like uh, by the time I some of y'all lazy cats see this joint, gonna be uh, gonna be April. Um, what's your thoughts on some of the albums that drop in the chat too? J Camp, Top Five, Bebo P, the chat. We talk about all this music that's dropping, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Benny the Butcher drop. You know what I'm saying? Back, 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 back. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> what's the staying power, though? Is there any album that you heard this year? J. Kent, uh, Top 5 started off, Bebo P, The Chat. What's the album that, in your mind, are albums that are staying power? Because, again, Nas kind of ran Hip Hop 50. You know what I'm saying? No, oh, he did. Uh, mm -hmm. Hit Boy kind of ran it. You know what I'm saying on the on the on not even on the low, but we know Hit Boy was crazy shit. Who you thinking though, Top Five? Uh, so if the question is 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 there any albums from 2024 for me that have stuck that I think stand out? The answer is no. There is there there are, there are none in my opinion. And I'm kind of looking at the rate your music charts. It just shows all the <laughs> it shows all the uh, drops from this year that are hip hop. N I'm looking at them. Nothing really stands out i mean mike had a new album if you listen to uh tan Crescetta records which earl sweatshirt navy blue yeah yeah mike had a record yeah he's good but i mean in, in a given year for me he's never going to have like the number one or number two album he just nah. consistently has really good albums but as far mm -hmm. as something that stands out I, I fuck with mike heavy but okay let's give it to him right let's say okay mike had one of them ones yeah. i'm looking at it okay Schoolboy Q dropped Blue Lips, which I wasn't really a fan of, and I really fuck with Schoolboy Q. We do too. Blue Lips to me yeah. was like, mm -hmm. it was mad inconsistent. It just felt like a compilation album. It felt like mm. just yeah, a bunch of random songs, different. like too many beat switches. It's his weakest album, and this is Schoolboy Q. This is someone who normally has a very tight and and intentional theme throughout his albums. If you look right. at Habits and Contradictions. Blank face, oxymoron. There's always like something deeper below the surface with his albums. And it's on his Blue Lips albums. It's not like that. It's just songs. I'm looking Boldy James and Nicholas Craven. Okay, cool. I'm not really a Boldy James fan like that. Okay. Bro, there, there's really. Okay. Please point it. If someone has a different opinion, point out to me where the fire is. Hey, this street. thing, the chat right now, they saying ransom. You know what I'm saying? 
Okay, we, we give hey, it to him. I, 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 I like the ransom drop. I like I like that ransom yeah. drop. You know, so salute ransom, ransom drop. Uh, 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 I am God. <laughs> I am God. Yeah, the blood stain. To uh, me, sway I am two. God got the best album to drop. Yeah, this I don't know if you year. heard that yet. Top five, uh, but it's hot though. Yeah. We're Vince talking about Vince albums that stand out, though. Albums that stand out, not just good albums. Some that stand mm. out. No, I mean, I feel like the Blood Stain Two, though, Sway Two. I feel like that stands out for me okay. personally, okay. Right. from okay. what I've heard thus far. We still young in the year, but what I've heard thus far, that one stands out for me. Uh, I do agree with the chat too, Ransom, and my guy Big Spencer. Them three albums that dropped this year for me are, are, are pretty much solid. I like the mic too, though. Mike is in there as well. Um, those four. I definitely mm -hmm. want digging the cue. I see. I sure. see you quiet over there, Bebo. What you thinking? Well, I was thinking about uh, top five. Who top five is really looking forward to um, having a standout album in twenty twenty four? Like, who do you foresee like kind of breaking that mold in this year, artist wise in hip hop? Well, it depends who drop a predictor. Sure, sure. So it depends who drops. So, like some of my favorite rappers, Kendrick, Schoolboy Q. I mean, and I catch a lot of flack for this. Even Lil Sims, they've all dropped like in the past year or two, and I don't think any of their albums have been that memorable. I didn't like the Kendrick, Mr. Morale, Big Steppers album. I'm sure we're going to get to his verse, so I'll save my, you know, on like that. So I'll save my thoughts on that. I'm not really the the major artist in my opinion who I've dropped, including Drake. Who I really don't listen to that much anymore. Damn. And future, like even the new future album. Bro, like none of this is like it's okay. None of it is like standout. That's why I say when you just word standout. These are like average albums. This is something if it come on, yeah. you might not turn it. You might not say this is weak. But this isn't this isn't like some of their best work. This isn't standout in their discography. So I'm not really looking for any artist in particular to drop a standout album. I'm just sitting back. Because when I have, when you have expectations like that, then you know you're more easily disappointed. I'm just kind of sitting back listening to these albums that drop, and none of them are really memorable. Memorable to me, it's like they're just phoning it in. The rappers well, for the most thing, part. We, we talked about Big Sean's single, uh, Precision. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we kind of said the same thing. It's like, man, it sounds just like that J Cole first shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, same cadence, same delivery. Is it the production? Because again, we see people pretty much going to the same five people. It's either the Marvel Metro Booming Cats and all that. The dude got they go heavy in the paint with the uh, 808s, or it's like the uh, Alchemist Hit Boys, Drumless Nicholas yeah. Cravens, and like I said, Super Nicholas and all our people. But is it that nobody's going to uh, the classic cats? You know what I'm saying? And not the Boom Bat per se. But just some of the dudes that, like, again, you talking about Pac, man, there's still producers that was working with Pac. And they, you know they got the ASR-10 ready with some beats. Why are they not reaching out to these cats and why are they all going to the same people or getting the same style of beats, in your opinion? J. Kemp, top five, Bebo P in the chat. So you're asking me? Yeah, yeah, you got started off, man. I don't, I don't really think it's the production. I think the production's been fine. Even on Schoolboy Q album, there's like some beat switches, which were really questionable to me. Um, like on Ohio. I don't think Ohio, I think the first part of that song was great. The more slow yeah. tempo beat. It kind of reminded me of Groove Line off of um, Oxymoron, I believe. But then it's just too many beat switches. But that aside, I think the production is fine. Okay. I think it's the rappers. I'm not hearing the bars Damn. like I normally hear the no bars. bars. Man. Yeah. I'm not hearing Man. the bars. I'm not hearing like proper songwriting, like even a, yeah. and within the album itself. Or maybe this is a production thing, the sequencing of the album and choosing which songs go where. Yeah. I'm not hearing like even albums that make sense anymore. And I said this like on my last, mm. on my, my one of my recent videos. Like, am am I getting aged out? Am I am I the weird one for expecting albums to make sense nowadays? Because maybe this is just, just an old critique that I'm carrying over from the 1900s. You know what I mean? <laughs> am am yeah. I weird for expecting albums to have like themes or to make sense or to be cohesive? Maybe that's not what it is anymore. And I felt that way about the Kendrick album. It didn't feel like any type of theme. It didn't feel like any. It felt like just, again, a compilation album. And this is my favorite rapper, mind you. It felt like a compilation album. I feel like that way about Q. I feel that way about a lot of these Album, so I don't. I don't think it's the producers 
or maybe that is a production note. I don't know who's sequencing mm -hmm. the album and who's choosing the direction. I think it's the rappers, though. Well, well and it's the did, thing too. You just well, said hold up, J. Okay, you, uh, we said this to uh, uh, I think either you or Bebo P said this last episode. Where's the A and R? Was that you, J. Camp, or was that Bebo mm. P? That there's no A and Rs anymore. Is that the issue, mm. J. Camp? That was J. Camp. Yeah. No, I think because I was going to say top five said a key word. He said sequencing. Mm. To me, it's not the production. It's 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 a little bit on the MC too, but the MC has something to do with the sequencing, like how they putting the projects together, the flow, it don't make sense. And top five named a perfect example of the Schoolboy Q album. Like some of the beat switches don't fit. Like mm. that's where the A&R is missing because it's, it's the, the sequencing mattered for when albums like start to be in that classic category or memorable right. albums. Like right, yeah. we know Facts. exactly the, the playlist, mm. how the track listing is going to go. It's mm. a flow to it. Right now, these albums have no flow. It's like, I don't want to say lazy. That's a strong word. I just think there's not enough creativity in the studio with them, not just the A&R, the producer. Like, maybe there's too much guys just sitting cast cast beats. Like, they're not in the studio together to really mm. make stuff mesh. They're doing too much perfectly. of that uh, drop boxing in the beats and all that. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So I, it's it's a lot of sequence and it's just off. Like it's this there's no flow. So it don't vibe. If there's no flow, it don't vibe. Like you can't even really catch a vibe to these albums. Yeah. And that's, that's the, big, that's the biggest problem. Well, it you know it, with everything that was just said, it makes me want to segue into the uh, uh, the uh, sixty four thousand dollar question as far as modern day verses are concerned, or what's being hyped up today, and that's the Kendrick verse on that uh future metro booming mm. album so with that said um is it safe to say that you feel the same way about kendrick's verse on that track top five well hold up hold up hold up don't bust that nut yet hold up now i got <laughs> oh, some footage no diddy. hold up <laughs> hold that's up. like the best <laughs> kendrick <laughs> verse i done heard in years man years take these off it's like, it's like the best kendrick verse i done heard in years all the shit with baby keem and shit it's trash um, facts. Most of it. I won't say all of it. But he he, he sounded hungry there. It's not like he's trying to start some shit up. Okay. Uh, maybe this is how Kendrick gets himself creative again. Like, I'm going to go start some shit. Let's start some shit. Mm -hmm. Kendrick and Drake, they always, like, I wouldn't say they always, but there's been tension since they had first came out. Fans wanted to see some, some action. We want to see some action. Kind of weird to be doing this in year, what is this, 15, 16 for Kendrick? 15, year 15, Kendrick Lamar EP came out in 09, so this would be year 15. Kind of odd. I would think they're all friends at this point, and especially Kendrick and J. Cole, because they do have more than one, more than a couple songs together. Mm. Hey, man. Again, like Bebo P said, is that the best bars right now for 2024? What's your thoughts, top five? Well, I thought it was, like I said in the video, I think it's one of Kendrick's best verses in years. Mm. But you got to, mm. like, what am I really saying there, though? Because I didn't like the Mr. Morale album. And the only album before that was, like, in goddamn 2017. So that, it just goes to what we're talking about now. Like, the bar is so low right now. Now, I don't think that was a bad Kendrick verse, but that's more in line with what he had been doing. That's not one of his best verses. That's okay. not, mm. But it's one of his best verses recently because he sound hungry. The Mr. Morale album. I, I probably honestly listened to that album like twice. Once when I reacted, and then two when I edited the video. Wow. I have no mm. reason to return to that album. Jeez. And I think he had like a song from there on that that I heard a bunch of times, with in '95 or something, which was cool. Jeez, but I think the Kendrick verse, good verse, right? But we have been so starved in hip hop of actual bars, and this is something Ooh. I said on the same video that I talked about earlier. When I, when I was talking about, am I weird for like expecting albums to have direction now? Is, is that like just a thing, of the, a relic of the past? I also said, am I weird for expecting bars to like make sense and then to like have directions? Or is it just normal for every verse to be packed with non sequiturs? No bar follows the previous bar. Every bar is like a new thought. So this Kendrick verse wasn't that. It was a departure from that, which is good. It's a good verse, but 
I don't think it was a great diss. Like these niggas are dissing each other. They're not even saying each other's name. It's not like, <laughs> like if you read the comments on that reaction, some people in the in the comments are like, yo, this is a boring reaction. Like you have no energy. Well, cause the verse wasn't like that, bro. It was a cool verse, but it wasn't like he calling out names. This ain't Tupac hit him up. So that's how right. I feel about that. Well, and, and that's the thing too, man. Like I think uh, we talked about this in a group chat. Uh, we talked about this a little bit on a little pre-show that we did earlier t uh, today. Um, if you kind of grew up around like the Pac era, the Biggie era, like all those uh, no Vaseline joints, you're like, this is a diss? This is baby. This is baby. Y'all getting hyped about this joint? There ain't no news going on. This must be a bad news cycle joint. You know what I'm saying? Right. Man. JK, what, what was y'all, JK and BOP, what y'all think about the verse though, as far as the Kenny situation? But also, do you agree with Top Five, man, about uh, Mid Stepper? Yeah, I mean, it was just a just a good verse. I mean, it was solid. <laughs> you know, like I I'm not hating on it, you know, but it's not fire and brimstone, which is what me mm. and BOP was saying. Like, it's not the the bars that's gonna cut somebody's knees off and you just watch them bleed. It's not the horror movie like R.J. Payne where you just gonna end somebody's career. Like, it's not those type of bars. It's it's really just. Okay, I'm about to give you a love tap. I'm I'm a pepper you up. It's just like two jabs at the end of the of the, of the round. I mean, it's like it's them two jabs that connect, and then you go to your corner. That's basically what this is. Um, my question though, for top five would be, do you think Drake is even going to respond to this, or is it just going to be more subliminal criminal, which he's been doing? Subliminal criminal? The whole time. He just, <laughs> everything is like, you got to go back seven albums to, to hear one little bar that, yeah. oh, so that's what he was, that's what he meant by that when he was talking about futures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you cutting right. futures short. Right, yeah, I, I think Drake will respond, but I think it'll be, because they've been responding to each other. Like they said, this isn't Kendrick like reaching out to attack. This is right, Kendrick yeah, yeah. responding to some shit, which was them mm -hmm. responding to some shit. So I think they'll respond, but it's going to be a subliminal. And to your point, this is a response to first person shooter, which I thought wasn't even that great of a song. Also, again, I listened to that song. I thought I was about to hear some John Blaze shit. It wasn't like that. Like it's honestly one of Cole's weakest features. And I say that because Cole has had some really great features. He's had five features. Yeah, he has. But that first person shooter is not, it's not one of those. So I even had to, I listened to that song, didn't like it. But I had to go back and like there was a Kendrick diss on that record. Like you really got to do like quantum physics yeah. to find it to find it. Yeah, yeah. in the, in this like you got to know his cousin. Yeah, what yeah. he was really saying was when he said chicken yeah. wings, that really meant Drake. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's on. when we can go back to production because that production is no different than what Big Shine just right, wrapped on on Precision. So right. You keep Facts. sliding on them same beats. Your ears aren't delivery. trained to hear the bars. You know what I'm yeah. saying with that type of production and. and and that's why it sounds like medi I don't want to say mediocre. It just sounds okay. Okay, yeah. It just right. sounds okay. You 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 rapping, bro, but it's the same cadence homie just used on his joint. But but this is the so, thing though, Jay Kemp though, but is this us growing up watching Bird and Magic with uh, when uh MJ had the gold chain on and now we watching Chris Middleton? It's basically watching And we Chris can't respect Middleton. the jumper? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> It's 2024 Chris Middleton, not like 2021 Chris Middleton when he was out there, mm. yeah. you know, busting, busting bread when he bites something too, dog. When he bites something with Pause the teeth, no dog. You know, right. And I would, I wouldn't even say it, it for me. It's, it's, you know, being able to watch. Okay, I watch Kobe now. We watching Chris Middleton because these are the same guys I grew up watching. <laughs> it's just like y'all not, y'all just not rapping like that. Like these are the same yeah. people. Like the people who was yeah. fired when I was coming up. These are the same Drake, Kendrick. Like these are the same people. Uh, yeah, like all these other rappers that's dropping nowadays, but it's like. For some reason, they just well. Kendrick sounded hungry on this, but as of late, I just I just feel the hunger's missing. Well, this thing, what about what about Leroy Green anybody. right here, uh, Jay Camp? Le Leroy Green's basically screaming in the chat. First of all, salute to my brother, uh, Leroy Green. <laughs> salute to Leroy you know what Green. Jay Z salute. fan salute in the house. Green. You know what I'm saying? Jay Z, look up. Right. Uh, he's saying Ransom one of the best, but nobody cares. What I got some that that's, that, that, that's ahead, a uh, that, that's more of a media machine like factor mm, there though too because okay. those type of guys would force these dudes we talking about to actually have to rap like okay. if you put ransom on a joint with them dudes they wouldn't just be like 
you can't just do that. You're going to have to rap, bro. Like, you're going to have to cook on the facts, mic. Facts, facts. Mm. You know, so they, there's no MC to push none of these dudes in that type of mainstream, mainstream environment. Nobody's being pushed. That's why everything just sounds like, well, I can just easily write this 16 in five minutes and get out and get out the booth. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not they're not being motivated to have to come like that. Cause there's nobody pushing them. So when you when you got the dope yeah. underground cats who really are about that pen, they're not they're not being like put in that same arena. Cause if they were, they know there wouldn't be no more <laughs> of what we're hearing right now. They would have to really get back to them bars. That's just my personal opinion. Go in and talk. People are top five, would y'all about to go yeah. in? Yeah, well, for top five based on you know the you know to take that 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 uh, baton from J Camp and that you know the machine is not really pushing the artists that really should be out in the forefront, which has been going on forever and a day as we know. So you factor that in, you factor what you said top five, which in so many words comes down to the fact that there's been, uh, in your opinion, from what you said, no standout hip hop verses or songs or albums like that more so albums i think um so with those variables coming from hip-hop 50 is hip-hop in your opinion going down and fast or do you feel otherwise exactly what well i'll say this i'll say this uh to j Kemp's point i would say um i don't think it's that there are not enough underground rappers doing their thing to mm. get these mainstream guys going i would say mm -hmm. it's not enough new rappers like there ha there's no new wave of rap too like the <laughs> rappers who are the hottest right now were the rappers who were the hottest 15 years ago kendrick yeah. cole wiz drake that, right so that's true but i think with new blood coming in and challenging the old guard that would help motivate these guys but that there, there's none the rappers who are most yeah. popular are still the most popular even when you look in female rap which is one section of rap who has seen a, a large swath of new people come in at the top it's still nikki nikki is really the only one sell and doja cat are the only ones really actually moving numbers not trending on social media doing shit with vogue and having placements with fashion designers i mean selling records it's nikki right and it's doja cat i would say cardi b but she ain't dropped since like 2017 2018. Man. how right? many times have you said it on this show too. iceberg was it cardi got to come outside and not just drop a single she gotta spin the block man and not just start, right. show that bush you know what i'm saying Ow. she man. gotta really get in the booth and, and also to me i mm -hmm. think we got mad respect for you know the um foxy browns of the world a few of those chicks and Lil kim that kind of used to write some of their bars now maybe all the way <laughs> not all the way but maybe they influenced a little bit of they maybe they took the bar took the bars i remember Pac said hey man i'm gonna write a verse for you hammer because hammer was trying to do all some crazy stuff and he said man i'm gonna write a song for you and he was like, man, just listen to it. And then you put your own swag onto it. At least some of the artists back then were putting some of their swag on it. You know what I'm saying? When you heard a Little Kim record, you felt Little Kim wrote it because, you know, she she put her effort into it. I'm not saying they wrote everything. But the whole thing is you can tell this stuff is written by some saucy Santana cats, man. <laughs> Hold up. So much diddler swag. Exactly. So it's written by some of the, some of the saucy cats. And... Everything's really just manufactured Twitter Twitter posts. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man. That uh, who's that dude from your guy from your city, man? Jack Harlow, uh, J Camp. Yo, yo, oh, yeah. You was in the club with Stop. him when uh, now, it went now off. You, that's your man. Now that's you. That's your man, KFC. Oh. That's your man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now y'all really off in the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, the whole man. thing is, and again, like, if this is a situation, top five started off, but J Camp, Bebo P in the chat, and again, mm -hmm. we not just body and hip-hop man we love hip-hop so the oh, question yeah. is man it's almost like hey man you love wagyu uh, a5b you know what i'm saying i do actually i love but wagyu. now you basically getting <laughs> hamburger helper my knee i get i need i need salt need come through with the salt on the bull well, but so the whole thing man, is the quality is going down man you got uh no disrespect you got immigrants over here make uh getting the tyson uh food uh, contract now you know what I mean? we ain't got no americans do it so the whole thing man is where what's the trajectory going with hip hop now? Because again, we have a couple few white knights, man, out here going crazy. The three R's, man, you know, see Ransom, RJ Payne, uh, um, and Rome, 
We got a couple little mm-hmm. dudes out here really representing. But again, like Leroy saying, the masses don't care. So top five started off, man. Like, how do we kind of get? I mean, because again, we got dudes like you that basically like, hey, let me introduce something new to you. Let me review this thing. Let me introduce something that's not on this playlist. Because again, we grew up listening to the radio. The radio told us what was hot. The DJs told us what was hot. We don't have no uh, no uh, K slays anymore. Nothing like that. That's that's gonna play an ether. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And get get uh, this by you know the masses because they rep with uh, the other side. But top five, J Kemp, BOP in the chat. How do we change it? Who who is that dude? Is gonna bring? this Calvary in, man. Let me let me say this. I also don't think it's that the mainstream isn't allowing the guys who are the best to rise to the top. I don't think that's it either. Mm. And I'm going to get at Ransom. If you like me in the chat, if you like me, you're about to hate me if you like Ransom, <laughs> what I'm, I'd say about Ransom. But I'm going to say this. Because <laughs> I've listened to Ransom. I've reviewed his music. But I'm, I'm going to say this first. I don't think oh, it's yeah. that the mainstream isn't allowing the right artists to rise to the top. Because look at what's happened the past 10 years. Who are, is at the top right now? The people who were the best in 2009, 2010, Kendrick, Drake. Uh, I never thought it was Drake, but he had great song. He's a great songwriter. I can't take that away from him. Cole, uh, Big Sean. I, I know people make fun of Big Sean now, but Big Sean was a trendsetter. Like he, he stylized an entire flow that the entire industry used for like two years, three years after. Mm. All those guys rose to the top. Kendrick w- was never supposed to be one of the highest selling rappers. He never made music for like the the mainstream audience like that, but yeah, no, those guys actually rose to the top. The guys who were the best. Now to Ransom, he's a good rapper, right? But I like great songwriters. Ransom puts bars together. I got Ransom reactions on my channel, and I get uh, all people always give me blowback when I say this about Ransom and when I say this about Planet Asia. Good rappers, but once I've heard one album. You don't need to hear every ransom drop. You can listen to like one of out of every four or five, because it's the same. It's the same style. It's like the same type shit going on. Now he's gonna have some new bars and setups and punchlines that make you go like, okay, yeah, I like how he did that. That you that he's never done before. But stylistically, I'm a songwriting guy. I like song, good songwriting. I like different flows. I like this is why when I say I and again, people are gonna kill me in the chat. When I say I like Doja Cat. Doja, you listen to a Doja Cat song, it's like, sometimes it's like, you think it's like two, three different people on a song. It's one person. Ransom don't have that. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to rise to the top like that, to the mainstream, because he doesn't write that way. Like, he's a rapper's rapper, bars, bars. And I also think he's not even the best underground rapper. He just mm-hmm. is too samey for me. Drop the hate in the chat right now. Mm. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, you agree mean, with uh, top five? Right, uh, Jay Camp, go he, in, man. Nah, I was go just saying he's giving his opinion. Um, my mm-hmm. only pushback to that is I don't really think Ransom to a man really cares about being in the quote unquote mainstream. I'm playing, throwing air quotes mainstream. Mm-hmm. I think his mainstream is his mainstream. He has a, a, a large underground fan base, or I should say a fan base that wants to hear that type of music i just feel like he makes music for people who want to hear that like i my ears are personally trained for that you know like it's hard for me to listen to a full album of like a um what's a little shorty's name um that has a song with buster cody like i can't just listen to my, my ears are not conditioned to that but it is conditioned to a ransom and I get what you're saying about once you've heard like one album or once you heard five tracks, you feel like you you don't need to really hear anything. Uh, that, that's a very good point. I don't disagree with that, but I personally want to hear that type of joint over yeah. because that that is like music for my soul, for my hip hop soul. And everybody has a different hip hop soul, a different flavor, but it does not make what you said wrong though, because I. I can't really push back on that because yes, there's a bunch of artists that I personally like where you probably could hear like 10 songs of theirs and be like, oh, well, I, I kind of don't have to hear another album because I know what this dude sounds like. But for me, that's what I need. That's what I ask for. I need that. So I feel like Agreed. there is a lane for those guys. I just don't think they want to really be in the same lane as a Drake because then fans are going to be expecting Ransom to get on the track and start singing. Like, with a Mariah Carey on the hook. 
Yeah, yeah Mariah Carey, like that's he's never going to do that. Like that takes him out of what he does best. And well, I this think thing, everybody though. has a blueprint. Like Drake is not going to go in that arena because he just that's not a place where he can play. But you this know, is the thing, though, man. Back, back in the day, man, we had your Mike Geronimo's who would do that kind of yeah. stuff, the Kwame. Ransom stuff. Yeah, we had the, you <laughs> we know, the, we had those like, guys that, yeah, we had those guys that would do that. Bull, you know what I'm saying? But the whole Even thing is, D. we had the Pox, we had the superstars. You had this, you had the Shaquille O'Neals with the crazy personalities that were basically bringing the money, bringing the fans. BOP. Yep. Do you see anybody carrying that torch? Will we ever see another Jay Z? Will we ever see? another big personality in hip hop, like like a Busta Rhymes who will say, you know what, F it, I'ma just do, get, get the crazy camera on the video and <laughs> Ben Thuggin, Jim Thuggin, and go in crazy and do some different <laughs> things. Will we ever see that again after Hip Hop 50 for this next 50 years of hip hop? Oh, will, hip-hop even, will hip hop even get to 50 years, man? Because again, we are seeing the end of the era with no Diddy, you know what I'm saying? The corporate version of hip hop, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so will we ever see just pure organic, poor righteous teachers, cool G rap, rappers? That's hard to see happen at scale. It mm. really is. Um, you point. know that 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 first advanced form of hip hop's fifty years. That was just something special. I mean, everybody, um, you know, whether they were above ground, underground, or somewhere in the middle most everybody had something unique to bring to the table while having that appeal in the golden era today like top five said you know the the modern day best you know newer cats has been the same cats you know in no particular order has been kendrick lamar j cole and um drake in no particular order and you know whoever else you might want to throw up there but they came out you know several years ago so all I'm seeing now, I think all we're all seeing now is like, you know, your, 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 you know, female artists of the Glorillas and the Lottos mm -hmm. and all that ilk now, or on the other side for males, you're seeing like a lot of drill cats. So, you well, know, no, no, no respect, but it's just, you know, you're not seeing a lot of cats come in that's really uh, competitive and challenging folks to really help to carry this torch from the cats yeah. who did it in the 80s and 90s and did it very well yeah, yeah. you're not There's seeing no them carry that torch well, well. But this, this thing, not, I, I, think, I think the artist that could have done it was um uh, i just lost the train of thought uh <laughs> the guy that could have done it man was pop smoke you know what i'm saying in my opinion man he had the mm. girls going crazy he had the big records he could do something with uh travis uh uh looking crazy uh i think pop smoke was one of those guys that can still do the uh she like the way that she move she like the way that she dance she like the way that she go but then she get he but he can still like get respect from 50 cent though you know what i'm saying yeah. and still make a like because again i see the dudes making a whole bunch of uh rod wave uh uh dollar store uh fried chicken like i'm depressed and i'm mad and you see the girls making the hip-hop records the they, they can swag and talk about their sexuality. They can talk about what they do, they car, they driving. We don't see the swag from the guys anymore. You know what I'm saying? Am, am I off a little bit? Top five, what you thinking? <clears throat> I think uh, just a little bit, off a little bit. Because okay. they're, <laughs> they're all the Go in, go in. I, I think just the main point is the lack of new rappers. I, I, I think that's it. And, and the reason I mentioned the ransom thing was because yes, I agree with you, J. Kemp. Yeah, Ransom, he's not trying to rise to the to the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. I listen to artists like that. Currency, he's been making the same type of records Currency. for like 15, Whoa. 20 Whoa. years. Sound Currency. good too. Sound good too. Pause. Pause. Yeah, I know exactly. Guy, I know exactly what I'm gonna get from him. I know yeah. when he drop. I know it's not gonna be disappointing and it's not gonna be yeah. mind blowing. It's gonna be I know solid. I'm gonna enjoy yeah. it. I know exactly what I'm getting. It's like going to your favorite food spot. They make it the same way every time. Yeah. That's what I like. So yeah, I understand that certain underground guys don't have the goal of rising to the top. Another one of my favorite underground guys, Mozzie from Sacramento, Ooh, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what you're going to get from him. You're going to get bars, you're going to get that pain, he's going to talk a little shit, and he's going to be out there in 40 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. So I, right. I think his, I think acutely the main point, the main issue is the lack of new rappers. And in terms of trajectory, I think clearly hip hop is losing its place in the charts, which I, which I don't mm -hmm. mind. I think that's a good thing because pretty soon it's not going to be profitable for labels 
as profitable for labels to fund rappers. So they're going to go fund Afro beats. They're going to go fund Latin. Uh, what is the Latin reggae tone and all? They're going, they're going to go fund yeah. that. They're going to go fund pop music. And then there's going to be less money for hip hop, which I think is good at this point in time because the only people that are going to be left in hip hop are people who actually want to make hip hop music, not people who are just trying to come on and copycat and make the same type records. So I think that's the trajectory. I think we're going to see hip hop be be less prominent in the charts. And I think that um, you're going to see less artists, new artists trying to jump in for pop sake and more artists making music, hip hop music, Mm -hmm. because they love it. I think that's where it's going. Let me ask you this, uh, top five. Go go ahead, go ahead, ahead, Jake. Leroy Green made a really good point in the chat where he mentioned uh, Europe is holding down hip hop. Right. Do you feel that the reason why some of these labels and some of these record companies can't really market well is because they've kind of like oversaturated the market? Like, because cats in Europe is still rocking out to woo and, yeah. and all kinds still. of like legacy. Yeah, that's where most people going to get to get their money from. They They're still going selling out money. like large arenas and like football stadiums. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it seemed like it's still been growing in popularity in other countries. How do you well, even see that kind of like, you know, turning back around, man, and coming back to the States to where we start embracing hip hop again? Well, I it's think- almost, It's almost uh, like we spoiled almost, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I think I think the Europe thing, I think that's more of an in fact, I think it's their infatuation with our culture. When I mean our culture, mm-hmm. black American culture. I got you. Your, Europe isn't really going like that, going up like that. For all rap, it's it's legacy acts, which is great. Like the '90s rappers, they can go to Europe and get a bag. Like Mob Deep, R.I.P. Prodigy, uh, Q-Tip from Tribe. Like they can go, you know, even Tony Ayo and Fifty Cent. I mean, well, they still do numbers everywhere, but I mean, Tony Ayo will tour Europe by himself. He says this in, in his interview. Like Tony Ayo, Facts. by himself. So I think that's more of a that that's a different thing. I, I think it's good that they appreciate our our. Um, Legacy, legacy acts. It sounds crazy. I'm calling some of these guys legacy acts, our older acts. But I think that's more of an infatuation with our with our culture type of thing. And we are here currently in our culture, so it, it doesn't exist that same way for us. Follow up to that though. The reason why I mm-hmm. even said that was because when you think about it, just like global population, the United States really is a small, small, small dot <laughs> on the hemisphere. You know what I'm saying? In comparison. When you talk about Asia, like Asia loves hip hop. It's like 6 billion people are in China jamming right. hip hop, 90s. So I feel like to me though, the power of getting it into that many people's hands, that's like the pandemic, man. It's, it's spreading over there. I mean, it, it, still, it still has a place, what I'm saying, like, Real hip hop still has a place in this world. It may not be on U.S. soil, but it's somewhere, and it's a whole lot of damn people still listening to it. You know what I'm saying? When you really just do the math, <laughs> even when I seen like uh, some clips of uh, Kendrick's first show down in Mexico, that was wild, man. That that scene yeah, was, was great. Yeah, wild. Yeah, it was, yeah. great. It was, it was bananas, and they knew yeah. every single word of them songs. They did. Spots in the States don't be like that no more. They ain't jumping up and down, rapping every single bar for bar. They They're doing that overseas, though. Mm-hmm. They doing Unless that. You're from and the they essence just, of the the n- just sheer numbers, mm-hmm. man, right. from the streams, too. Like, I don't even think it gets reported over here because they don't want to embarrass these record labels. Yeah. That stuff don't mm-hmm. get reported. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, man, this thing real quick, man. Antoine's going crazy with the money tonight. Salute. Hey, salute Antoine, man. Yeah, Antoine going crazy tonight, man. Guy, man. He's saying, salute I think the Antoine. internet created too many small sectors of rap for us to even see superstars again. Cole, Kendrick, Drake were the last ones that blew up before the ones started to lose control. Mm. Top five, what you think? No, that's facts. I think Antoine is, for, is from my live chat. Hey, you never donate this much when I do my live. Look <laughs> 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 to Antoine though. I fuck with Antoine. He's, one of, he's one, of my, Antoine, one of my biggest viewers. Um, yeah, I mean, this is true. The internet created too many smaller sectors of rap for us. I, I don't think that's true. I don't think we won't see a superstar again. I think all that has to happen for us to see a superstar is for someone to actually try something different that just happens to hit with whatever wherever the American culture is at at the time. So like when T-Pab by Kendrick dropped, that dropped like at a 
at a perfect time in culture because there was this new black consciousness consciousness moving movement happening right as the album dropped. And then you had songs yeah. like Black of the Berry, you had songs like All Right, everything just hit. And it was like this funk disco type production on the album, which is also mm-hmm. comes from black consciousness. Like everything just hit. Nice. So I think I think we're gonna see a superstar again. Um after every dip, it's like the stock market. When, when it goes all the way down, usually it goes back up. And then when it's yeah, at the very relax. top, it falls back down. So I think right. it was at I think hip hop was at the very top in 2018. We had so many great albums in 2018. Nipsey Victory Lap. Ooh, that was when Kanye was doing the seven yeah. song albums with yeah, Nas, crazy. which was, yeah, was kind of yeah. weak. But the Nas yeah. Daytona came from that. We had Mac mm-hmm. Miller Swimming. We had uh, the Royce Book of Ryan album. We had so many Tana Talk Three. Yeah, right. Like we had so many great albums in 2018. And yet yeah, now that was the top. Now we're we're currently at the bottom, but I think it's gonna come back up. We're gonna see another hip hop superstar. But it's going to come from them doing something slightly different than what everyone else is doing. Rather, like you said, with Busta Rhymes with the videos or with the sound or just with the vocal inflections. And people are going to love it like they love Kendrick when he came out. He was different. J. Cole was a breath of fresh air when he first came out. People are going to latch on to it. That's how a superstar right. is created. It, it, but it has to intersect with culture right. at the time at the same time. Well, otherwise, they're, otherwise, they're just a good musician. Facts. Well, this I, thing too. I, I like, agree with that topic. It has to be organic like right now. We too. I'm playing like some Missy in the background, right? Mm-hmm. When the Missy dropped, it was crazy. Who's this fat girl in the trash bag? You know, she's going Stop. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With the finger waves, like your like your like your uh, auntie that sells plates and the puss and bull. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> in cigarettes when she could. Like who? Like Stop. who's like again? That sound was crazy. Changed the whole game up. But that was a Timbo and a writer with Missy, you know what I'm saying, doing that stuff. Right. Again, we see the Metro, we see the Hit Boys, uh, we see Young Berg, you know what I'm saying, hit, uh, hit maker now. Um, before we get you out of here, first of all, uh, can you rock with us the whole time or you, you, you out? We gotta, yeah, I can hang out, I can okay, hang out. Okay, 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 we're going to hang That's out. To, to, your missing yeah. point, to your Missy okay, point, okay. again, that, that was another culture thing. Like, Missy didn't have the like greatest bars, like. No. Beep, beep, who got the keys, keys to the, to the G. G. Bro, mm. That's like two bars. She ain't say nothing. But it, it's other stuff aligned. And we was, the culture, right. it was ready for that. And it was ready to support right. that at the time. So I, right. we'll we'll definitely see another superstar in hip hop. It, it's not going to be this year, though. <laughs> so, oh, this so, year. so hold on, hold on. That, that was my prediction. No, that was my thing. What are you guys, real quick, before we go into some topics? We got three topics tonight. What is you guys' prediction for 2024? Will this be the... Since 23, 23 was so high with, besides Buster Rhymes album, um, 2023 was so high, will 2024 be a low point in hip hop? Because again, is it just whack people making whack music or is it the heavy hitters are scared to drop? What's the prediction though? Real quick. The heavy hitters is dropping though. The heavy, the heavy hitters is dropping. Like Drake, Kendrick, uh, Cole. Well, Cole ain't dropped since like 2020. The heavy hitters are dropping though. Like the, the shit's just not memorable. You know what I mean? I, I don't even think 2023 was a high point in hip hop. I think hip hop. I think the high point was 2018, and I think the last really good year was probably like 2019 or 2020. I think mm. last year was a low point. I think 2022 was like salvage, salvageable. I think this mm. is the low point. I think uh, this year and next year will probably be low points. And I think we'll I, we'll see it'll that. it'll get back to it like end of next year, 2026. I think that's when we'll probably start seeing new blood or seeing some type of new movement give new life to the genre. But this is a low point, so was last year in my opinion. Yeah, so with yeah. that said, you know, uh particularly with the question I'm about to ask of uh, last year, 2023, you said it was a low point for hip hop. On a scale of one to ten, what is that low point? For hip hop 50, given you said it was so low, would you rank it at a three out of 10, a two out of 10, a four out of 10? Where would you place that? Where would you place uh, 2023's hip hop 50? What, what do you mean, a hip hop 50 concert with Nas and Lauren Hill? Oh, no, just all of 2023. Just that you know, year. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you know, music uh, as a whole. Yeah, yep. I like a three. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this year okay. is like a, this year is like a one or two. Okay. Yeah. Do you think this year has the potential to be higher than last year's three, oh, in sure. your opinion? Sure. I uh, mean, it, I don't think it's going that way. Okay. But sure. I mean, 
if I were just to say no, I would just be pessimistic. Like, yeah, no matter what drops, he's not going to like it. I think, sure, it could happen. Do I think it's going to happen? <laughs> not exactly, no. Mark so DJ this, said he got his 7.8 out of 10 last year. But we'll, again, we'll, okay. what will stand out? Mark DJ, what really dropped last year? Stand out. Don't just name a good album. Don't just name okay albums or albums that was cool. What was really stand out? Like in 2018, Victory Lap, stand out. Stay Tone about Pusha T, stand out. Str uh, Black Thought, Streams of Thought, mm. stand out. Jericho Jackson by El Zai and uh, Crisis, stand out. What was stand out like in 2020, 2023? Like that. I th I th I think Nas shit. Yeah, Nas. Without yeah. saying Nas, don't say yeah. Nas, though. I mean, and, and again, when I say 2023 was amazing, half of it was just Nas doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And not even just music. It was <laughs> the museum. It was the concerts. It was the foundation. You know what I'm saying? The All this stuff. Yeah. Right. LL cool yeah. yeah. So a yeah. lot of times, if you were a Nas fan, you're like, oh, yeah, last year was great. Like, we had the uh, him at Madison Square Garden. We had him dropping two albums. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, Jay didn't drop none. So if you're a Nas fan, you love that. But to me, this is the thing. Will... Again, real, real quick, uh, Jay Kent, BBOP, will this year be a shining moment, man? And, like, again, Top 5 said, I mean, of course you can be a pessimist, but, you know, do we see, like, a – I'm wishing over here. Do you see a Jay dropping something? You know what I'm saying? Because, again, he dropped that that D'Angelo poop music. You know what I'm saying? Do you see anything – like on the horizon again in 2023 you had a uh, black thought i mean you had people dropping stuff black thought black dropped. thought uh Shane sky zoo project rj I Payne Larry dropped june a few. had a, had a june dropped too. two that was deep that was to me i'm still banging them joints oh uh, yeah um, i'm still still jamming the june too but again you you got Nas drop like we over here talking about to talk about Nas dropping a video from an album from last summer that's the highlight thanks I mean, again, what, what do you guys think? Again, Deuce is saying Jay Skis and salute to Jay Skis. We got a little interview with him. Salute. Oh, he dropped yeah, some yeah. dope. Salute to Dream, uh, Dream, Dream uh, Drum you. Work. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that director four, could I see uh, Soul Madigan and his saying the director's cut four? Yeah, director's cut it four, did. The director's four it did. was last year. Uh, yeah. Do y'all agree, man? Uh, uh, <laughs> Idol, uh, Idol Gray said es Esco fans were eating last year. We was oh, eating yeah. good. But, I mean,. I mean, I, I, I always say, man, year. you got to have two apex predators, man, to have a good thing going, mm -hmm. man. Jay has to be where Nas is at, or uh, Drake and uh, Kendrick and Cole. You got to throw Big Sean in there every now and then, you know what I'm saying, with something crazy. Will we see that this year or not, man? Do you see J. Cole dropping something? I see Cole dropping something this year. Mm. Uh, just to kind of go back on 2023 real quick. Mm -hmm. um, the way I kind of judge it is differently because I feel like we had a lot of good, worthy hip hop albums, maybe from folks that we would consider like non mainstream. Like I, I thought it was, it, I thought it was a good year for the non <laughs> mainstream. Yeah, artists. for the guys, that, for, the, for those guys that shine, put out like, some uh, physical. Because a lot of those guys who, who's indie and they're able to kind of they have creative control over their projects and they can put out three, four, five projects in a single year that to me, like, I feel like a, a lot of artists did have control over their artistry. And I felt like that is what has gotten better over the years. And to, to your point, top five, starting with 2018, 2019, when you had like kind of Gibbs starting to rise a little bit, when he had a joint with Alchemist, he had a joint with Mad Lib. Mm -hmm. the book of Ryan like stuff started to me I felt like the hip hop was starting to elevate again because I, I I agree 2018 was was kind of like the peak and I but I think like 2023 was the year of the underground to me and I felt like hip hop 50 was represented well by the underground I felt like the underground held up his bargain well and it's the thing though Jay can't and Bebo P can, can you answer this Bebo I know I'm putting you on the spot Bebo uh is this just us mm. watching like the Tex uh, triangle offense and like, oh yes, it's hot. But you know, like the new <laughs> the new thing is the Splash Brothers and Bull. You know what I'm saying? Like they changed the game up. They they well, getting six three, six Brothers seven dudes. The thing, they basically going crazy with the threes now. If you watching the NCAA tournament, if you don't hit threes, you gone. I don't give a hell. What well, no, you they, got they, they they influence the game absolutely. Right. I so mean. that's the other thing is. Is it? Are we just like, yeah, that was dope because we haven't we listen to stuff that we hearing from our ears, 
But as far as somebody who wants to push the envelope, what was 2023 like, or that, or even going into 2024 right now, BWP? Are we just basically just seeing what we like to see? You know what I'm saying? And not evolving with the game. I think that 2023 was the year largely of the indie artist. Mm. Um, okay. Of, in addition to, of course, you know, the, the many moments that Nas uh, epically provided us um, as hip hop's ambassador for not only hip hop 50, but hip hop in general. Um, LL Cool J, you know, I give him his, you know, give him his salute as well because he stepped away from the acting thing or at least paused on that just so he could focus on giving gratitude for uh for the culture <laughs> and you're the worst cat for that but uh yeah man but um other than that i mean it was mostly like for folks of that ilk along with like your 38 specials your nimlos your shade Noirs, Nimlo, yeah, you know so, yeah. you know artists like of that ilk and of course you had the other side of the game too in which allegedly there was no number one rap album on the charts until like what late june with lil yeah, uzi doja. Mm. So, i think it was doja cat actually oh was it doja, yeah, doja okay. okay it was doja i mean it, 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 was. It, it was uzi vert i don't think was num- <laughs> did uzi vert get number one allegedly he did uh, with that allegedly. pink album with that uh, pink yeah, flag allegedly. album or whatever yeah but then allegedly. doja got had the first single though with the one joint the uh red paint pa- right. town red swag facts i mean i mean yeah. that's i mean even if it's do if you even if it was doja still point being that's the other side of the coin in that you know, and I think it kind of ties into what we're all saying, even with what Top <laughs> Five had mentioned, and that hip hop hasn't really, and it, it seems to be kind of de escalating from that mainstream fray. Um, so we'll just have to see how things transpire as the uh, days, months, and years pass. Well, and this is the thing, man. Let's move on to some tops real quick. We're going to hit some real quick. The Future and Metro Booming album. I saw the review to Top Five, did he looking sideways over there? Uh, we don't trust you. <laughs> 17 joints. You no know, Metro won't trust you. Won't trust you. You know what I'm saying? 17 joints collaborative album. Was the hype just the Kenny rec- the Kenny bar? Or was this actually a good album for you guys, man? In the chat, what do y'all think? Because, again, we got mad respect for Metro Boom. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah, salute. Mad salute. respect. Absolutely. This is crazy, though. I'm from the generation that future is supposed to be bigger than Metro. Metro like mm-hmm. the dude everybody talking about. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, even talking about the future bars, is it more the Metro production? Because again, Metro killed that Spider Man little soundtrack joint, oh, killed did. it, and and his uh his uh, his album that he did last year too. That was a standout Grammy nod. You know what I mean? Uh, Should have kind of probably went over the mic, but but um, what's you guys' thoughts, man? Starting off top five, just real quick. What's your thoughts on this seventeen track joint? Again, I ain't heard nobody talk about nothing else, right? But Kenny. Hmm. We ain't, we ain't even seen that. I seen the little cream pie, booty pie, whatever the heck the song was. <laughs> One of, they dropped another video, but again, ain't nobody talking about future. What's yeah, man. Uh, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even listened to any of the album if Kendrick wasn't on it. Um, it did, it did numbers. Though. I think it went. Who did, who reported that it did like two hundred thousand plus the first week? With a Spotify, fact check billboard, something like that. Somebody fact check me, because if that's yeah. true, that's insane. I, those are insane numbers for for nowadays. So In today's yeah, it's supposed today's, to, yeah. it supposedly got the most uh, spins on Spotify in one day. You know what I mean? Well, you, we know we know why yeah. that was because yeah, the Kendrick, yeah, yeah, the Kendrick yeah, 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 yeah. But me personally, I'm not really that's a future so fan like that. Shout out to Future. Future is Dungeon Family, so he is right, technically hip hop royalty. Absolutely. He comes from that cloth. But uh, and I do like some Future projects. I like the Dirty Sprite too. I like mm. uh, the monster. The I like monster uh, is my joint. Mm. The, the beat, the beast mode, the Fifty Six Nights. But he has so many mixtapes. Even Free Bricks with Gucci Mane. Like when oh. I, I don't just trash these artists. I listen to them, then I trash them. But he's just not. <laughs> my <favorite>. Even <laughs> even on like that, the that song like that. Show, then I kick them I'm listening to the song like that, and it's like, I just can't listen to shit like that, man. Like a dude just like drawing and mumbling, and then just saying anything over a beat. I just. Recreationally, I don't listen to stuff like that. Metro Boomin is cool, but he's not like my favorite producer. Or anything. My favorite producer of all time is Ski Beats. He did the Camp Blow oh, Uptown Saturday Beats. Night. Yeah, yeah. He did the, he did the Reasonable Doubt. He did the Currency yeah. Pilot Talk One. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Salute boy. to Ski Beats. Metro to me, I mean, he got some 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 beats that bang in the whip, but that's not how I listen to music to bang in the whip. So Future and Metro combined, I would have never listened to this 
I know these are heavy hitters, but I would have never listened to this album if, if Kendrick wasn't on it. So yeah, this this is the thing, man. Like I consider that music Mopar music. You know, that this is for the dudes that got SRTs, uh, track hawks, and they going into the yeah. intersection where I can't go through and they doing donuts and they hit somebody. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh J Camp, man. Are you rocking the uh the future Metro booming? We don't trust you. Is there any standouts? Cause again, I think that key word the top five has been saying tonight is standout records. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even the single game, you know what I'm saying? Is there any standout records? Jay Camp on his Metro booming future. We don't trust you. With the uh with the Tiger Tail uh dreads and boo. I mean, we just talked about like stuff consistently sounding the same. So it's hard to <laughs> say that there's even a standout mm. when everything sounds the exact same. Like mm. it's just okay, you know. Um I mean I agree with top five. I mean, th like, there's only so much future that I can I can take, and I'm I'm not saying that I'm I dislike future, that I'm not like a a, a fan of some of his work. Uh, you know, like top five said, there's definitely some mixtapes of his that I I rock with. Double Bear said you going to the gym with it? No, like exactly, like you go to the gym with it. But right. my thing with my thing with Metro though, I feel like Metro has gotten lazy at times with the sampling of like. Mm. The old like Damn. Juicy J and 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 DJ Paul. How much can you, you know sample from like, uh from three six? That's too. That's that's like legacy, like South. Like you can't. I, I don't like when cats like Metro or Zay start sampling like legacy South. Like we when we talking about like the old like three six. It's a cheat code. Classics. It, like it's a cheat code. Like you, you know like. That's kind of, to me. That's off limits. Like as a as a southern guy and somebody who like loves southern music, that's a cheat code. It's like you're not just gonna be sampling a whole bunch of Manny Fresh, even though they've done that before. Like yeah, exactly. when like Cash Money had that whole wave. Uh, when Beats by the Pound with No Limit had that whole wave. Like you leave that alone. Leave that alone. Cause that's legacy in the South. Cause that still jams in the club today. Like that's that shit still hit. From Alabama to Georgia to Florida to South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, it all rides the same anywhere you go. And that's my problem with Metro. But just on the album, nothing really stands out to me outside of the Kendrick joint. And that's because Kendrick was on it. You know, it was more so the buzz of wanting to hear like mm -hmm. Kendrick actually rap Go rap hard again. on the paint on uh, Drizzy <laughs> you know, Tone. Actually, wheelchair just, Jimmy, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just actually rap again. But I mean, salute to Metro and Future, man, for, for you know, people talking about it. And he did the right thing that that what's the other joint where some uh, somebody else got oh when future was actually talking about drake <laughs> on one of them so t it it did its due justice as far as like getting the buzz mm -hmm. so they did their job there so salute to metro and uh and future because i mean everybody's buzzing about it not for the album itself but for right. the things that was in it's almost like going to the circus with this yeah. is this is yeah, the controversy so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's confessions on steroids. Uh, Bebo P, I know your uh, baby mama look like sexy red. Uh, SRT DVD. Uh, I know Stop this is it. your swag, man. What was your thoughts on the Metro? Yeah, because again, is there any? Yeah, glow. I know you like Leah yeah, glow. You know your baby mama like uh, glow. Glow really. Um, is there any shiny moments in this record at all? Because and like I said, we frog. We frog. We mess with. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to Pause, cuss. No, me. Diddy. We no Diddy. We fucks with uh, Future man. Like ATL stand up. You know what I'm saying? Metro boom. It's no. First of all, let's be clear before somebody clip this. We not dissing Metro or no, Future. Let's be clear, right? You know what I'm saying? Like we just being giving a critique. Like like Top Five said, we listen to it and we critique it. Yeah, we we, we should critique critique, it. critique on this. And is there any shiny moments? Because again, we know how to how the labels do. If this does numbers, they're going to copy this. They're going to do this again. Mm -hmm. Right. What's and your again. thoughts, man? <laughs> and again, yeah. and again, because this is easy. Right. It's hard to find a Nas. You can, you, Nas is a generational talent. We can find Harold Miners. You know what I'm saying? We can find an OJ Mayo. What's your thoughts, though, uh, BBOP? Yeah, the most standout joint was uh, the Kendrick moment on here and Kendrick himself. Um, Everything else, you know, it didn't really stand out, uh, you know, just audio wise or musically, in my personal opinion. Uh, that's not to say that there weren't any, you know, OK moments here or there. Um, but, you know, just on an overall basis, I mean, nothing really stood out. 
nothing really stood out at all outside of, um, you know, that feature of Kendrick Lamar and, um, of course, uh, you know, Rick Ross would stand out, you know, with uh, him being aligned or featured with them. Uh, but, you know, yes, you know, and, and I get the fact that, you know, there were some mini skits for movie scenes and audio of like uh, Prodigy from Mob Deep sparingly, you know, throughout the album, mm-hmm. speaking his mind about generally calling out all the fake behaviors that was going on, you know, when he was alive, of course, and yeah, Future even gave Metro booming his flowers all throughout the album from recognizing Metro as a millionaire on Yeah, the beats Attack. was free. Of course you're going to say what's up. Give me a free yeah, beat. Yeah, there was even a Give song called beat, Young boom. Metro. And Metro had right. some beat switches on a few tracks and whatnot. But overall, um, it, it probably works for that modern-day trap audience and area uh, or era or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The 21 Savages and all of them. You know what I'm saying? It, it might work for them, but I don't see it having – a little bit a grandiose yeah. sticking power in my personal opinion Let's I, say I, don't, you, I, don't think, I don't think it does either i think again man this is this is I, there's rap there's hip-hop there's rap and then i don't know what some of this other stuff is you know what i'm saying it's fusion you know what i'm saying like i think you were talking about like uh <laughs> spanish music but then there's like reggaeton and then there's like this new reggaeton that don't that sounds like a fusion of Miami trap, you know what I'm saying? So again, mm-hmm. it's a it's this is going down to like your cousin that is in from Alabama, but they got a cousin, they got a baby with your other cousin. So this is like some <laughs> other fusion stuff going on, and we don't, I mean, we not hating. Get your money, but again, we know how the labels are driven, and and we'll talk about this later on with Sus Diddy. Uh, we don't have the. Uh, other cultures running hip hop per se when we're talking about the, the guys who the ransoms and all that that's why they're dropping what they're dropping but we still have these big labels like Atlantic that are still signing your know, Pooh Shiesties and all these other cats that are basically making this music that right now in my opinion is diarrhea rap you know what I'm saying it only lasts yeah. about a week uh <laughs> you know and, and, and it's gone again you know what I'm saying the yeah glow joint was actually kind of hot because they was mixing it with like 50 Cent, they was mixing it with other stuff, and people were like, oh, okay, it's kinda cool. It's almost like the Coley Ray joint. The Coley Ray stuck because you mixed it with the Busta Rhymes record. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, Metro but again, kinda did that here a little bit, too. Facts. Yeah, yeah, so, he did that and, and with again, Prodigy, Quiet Storm, you know, on yeah, that scene at exactly. all. Exactly. It, it just wasn't there, so, yeah. Uh, it's no so, but, but it, real quick, man, Super Miss LB, uh, I, I didn't forget it, I didn't, that's my fault, Miss LB. I didn't forget about your, uh, your Salute, uh, Super sis. Chat, man. Salute to our family, Miss LB, representing all Ms. day LB, long. Yeah. Come on, let's be clear, man. Ten dollar holler. She's saying no disrespect. The top five with the stock market reference was cool, but who's li- who? Who <laughs> is lined up? That, that will be. You gotta read that, that will carry. The, yeah, I gotta read like her. That will carry the true essence of the hip hop after Cole, K Dot, and Drizzy wheelchair Jimmy. I mean, that's my point. Y'all that's being pushed point. after these guys. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's my whole point. Like we ain't got enough new, we ain't got enough new blood. You know what I mean? But I, I will say with this future album, yeah, I really don't talk sales. But the reason, a big reason why it's sold so much, is because a lot of well, this is based again. I don't do this whole digging into subliminals when rappers are beefing with each other. But DJ yeah, Academics JR did Ryder. it for me. Mm, <laughs> so D, right. DJ, yeah, JR Ryder, right? <laughs> Harold, baby Jordan, running. Yeah. But DJ Academics did it for me. Basically, this future album is like a diss towards Drake. It's like a huge subliminal towards Drake. That's why the future is on the mm. album. It's a bunch of people who have issues with Drake, with Drake. or mm. are said to have issues. The Weeknd, Rick Ross, mm. Kendrick, and then they're going to drop a part two. The album is called We yeah. Don't Trust You. It's called We part Don't Trust two. You. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's this another reason too. why it's doing so well. Yeah, part two this year, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, salute to DJ Scanless in the building. Salute, man. DJ on the road Scandal. to a million. You know what I'm saying? What's Another good, two man. Uh, super fan salute, man. Uh, Scanless with the fresh fade, man. We see right. you in the picture. The you know what I'm saying? Hey, make sure y'all follow Already. DJ Scanless, man. One love. Uh, what was uh, oh, Scanless saying real quick? Uh, he's saying uh, all the tracks named are at Flipper Drake's uh, for all my dogs uh, track name. Cinderella, The Shoe Fits. We don't trust you. Trust issues. Oh, Running out of time. Wow. Don't Point. be late. Yeah, okay. I, didn't see, I didn't catch that. Good. I, I didn't catch the name of that. Okay, Goofy, okay dog. DJ Scando. That might have to go up a little bit in my my rating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the DJ shots, bro. DJ Scandless. 
great catch. Great catch. And yeah, the, and it had a little little uh little puss in there too. You can tell DJ Scandal ain't got no nine to five. He was able yeah, to man, put, he, up, he going hard put that puzzle together. The, yeah, yeah. He ain't got no nine to five. It's yeah. crazy. Ah, he didn't want let, to me, let me see what I can do with this. Ah, <laughs> oh, <it>. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Got him. He going hard. Like, hang it up. Hey, man, let me see what I can do with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the thing though. It's a Dr. Robotnik song. <laughs> Uh, again, I think top five said this too. Uh, like when people big up an album, we put on high expectations, like almost like the Benny the Butcher joint. You know what I'm saying? He said it's gonna be better than Def Jam's or DMX's debut. Oh gosh! <laughs> and I don't think some of it was his fault. I think he could get some of the vocals cleared and all that stuff. It was some of it was Def Jam, but some of it was the beat picking and all that. But I see top five like, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> is this one of those records though? Is this one of these records that was hyped up? You listen to it and it's Mopar music. I don't think so. Okay. You talking about the future joint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is uh, it on the level of a beanie the butcher? We've been waiting for it for a minute and or this is just more like a mixtape they're playing around, just a troll. I think it did what they what they wanted it to do. I think mm. Drake is feeling a certain type of way, especially when he looks at the features, especially when he listens to like the lead song, which is Kendrick like taking subliminal shots at him. I think it did what it was supposed to do, which was Irk Drake. Wow. I think you bring up a good point there, top five, because what also happened allegedly was like all of those cats who, allegedly. yeah, all of those cats who featured on this album or was affiliated with these cats uh, unfollowed Drake on social media. Right. Allegedly. So, right. um, yeah, I think that ties great into um, or along with what you said about like this album doing what it needed to do. Mm. Maybe controversy. from the yeah. yeah, the controversy factor. Leroy yeah. Green coming with the five dollar Holla Man salute. Um, That's a good bar right there too, Leroy. Yeah, the he's saying uh, one Leroy. thing about Jay is even on the Andy musical, he knew he could still remain himself. The R's of the world need to go into the future world and cook. So he's saying they need to push their pen into the future world. They need to get with Metro, get with those Zaytoven. Mike will made it. Yeah, man. Uh, but again, like I said, man, uh, if you haven't checked it out, just check it out, man. Again, we still want to get black people paid. You know what I mean? Go check out the joint. Do, do a top five. Listen to it, then hate. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, <laughs> speaking of hate, man, a lot of people hated on this Nas Magic 3 when it first came out. They said it was hot dog water. Then they kind of oh. spun the block a little bit. So hold up. Blue Bentley? Japanese soap bar? Right. I love this feeling. Right. Niggy Tin just dropped a. a simp, a trick, or in love with your own distractions. They come. First of all, if you uh just ate some uh food, some you. Taco Bell, just don't look real quick. From a record from last summer. Right, right, right. It's, it's dope. It lets you know that yo, if the music is good, or even if it's not good, like you don't have to abandon the album, <laughs> like. A week after it comes out, Fact. I like I like this video though, and this was one of my favorite songs. I did a full reaction, full review to this album. It's on my channel. You can go check it out after this, of course. Um, but I like the I like the video. It looks like they're in L.A. or maybe in the Inland Empire here in Southern California. That's where it looks like they're at, just based on the the, the setting. But yeah, this is one of my favorite songs on this album right here. I love this and Japanese soul bar. Man. Mm. Come on, man. Cigars. J can't be both in the fire. chat. What was your thoughts on the man. visuals? Uh, again, Nas nah, saying, "Hey, man, I'm gonna just drop a, I'm gonna just drop a mm -hmm. video, man. You know what I'm saying? As I'm announcing the chess situation, yeah. the documentary, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Kind of. Oh, I mean, it almost helped Diddy get out a little bit. You know, it almost helped Diddy <laughs> just escape just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It just happened I a mean, week before. Just, uh, what was your it, thoughts though? It just goes to to Nas's genius, man. He knows how to market himself. Mm. and he knows how to play his cards you know what i'm saying so the visuals were dope and uh to top five's point like if the music is dope you don't just have to throw it in the trash you know mm, you, right. you can still right. you can still do videos you can still have visuals you can still pump that old music like we seen juvenile just do something recently with 400 degrees Ju I mean, so we just said Juve just dropped yeah. the same thing on yeah. the song 26 and, years And you old. should, yeah. like, they're Two 400 Mr. degrees from the Ruta to the Tudor today. Yeah, facts. Still yeah. is a classic. Yeah. Like, there's Feel still the no too. skips. There's still yeah. no skips on that joint. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. to me, a lot of artists should do that. I, I would love to see Wu 
go back to the 36 chambers. Mm -hmm. Drop mm -hmm. some stuff. And, from like, and, and then most of the people own chambers. their catalog too. So you're actually yeah, promoting man. something you actually own. Go back, go back and do that, man. It, to me, it's a genius move. Currency been doing that his whole career. Mm -hmm. facts, Currency would drop facts, a visual facts. from a mixtape that dropped five years ago. Facts, yeah, yeah. And still oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot like about that one I dropped. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna drop a video for it. Right, yeah, right, man. But a uh, salute to Nas, man, for doing that, man. That's that's, that's a flex, though. Yeah, it is a that's flex. That's a huge flex. Uh, Bebo P, what you thinking, man? I know this is your flavor. I know you play, bang this before you go to the Jamaican spot, man, and get that jerk, uh, jerk pasta. You know what I'm saying? I know you're riding this in the whip. Get What's your oxtail. thoughts, man? Get an oxtail, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, tip the waitress extra, you know what I mean? <laughs> what your number is? I got money. <laughs> nah. Looking like he better rob the place, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> well, I think what I can appreciate about Nas and Hit Boys, I love this film of video, is the fact that Nas is back schooling the youth as he once mm. did him. Uh, on the God Sons, ah. I know I can't. I know I can't be yeah, what I want to be. Wanna be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And at the same time, uh, one aspect that of the video that stood out to me was when Nas spits the bars. Uh, who really messing with that damn man's girl? That says everything about that man's world. The editor mm -hmm. of the video switches the visuals to an mm -hmm. upside down look of the Jeez. city, which to me symbolizes how upside down of an unscrupulous action. Uh, that is to engage in the other part that stood out to me uh of i love without a team under the leadership that's disciplined like a militant soldier is what i'm really mm, trying to say on that gosh. but yeah from nas teaching black kids about how to effectively you know just man maneuver and skate in this thing called life the right way you know iceberg you mentioned the chess you know pieces and the boards you know let the in relation go to that yeah and really just you know nas just riding passenger with the fly shades on and the Mercedes and the other Great. scenes, I think, you know, L E double F, you know, left, left, if I'm pronouncing that right, I think he did his thing in directing this video for yeah, Nas. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think this was a nice selection to serve as a single for magic three. So salute to Nas and hit boy and salute to left. Uh, but Thanks. iceberg, your thoughts. Nas is playing 3d chess, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. Chess. Come on. Everybody else is over here playing checkers and bull. You know, and losing, he's just having fun with it. Uh, and right. again, it's uh, it's almost like when you see Floyd Mayweather like, like just freestyle boxing and playing around in the ring when he just sparring, it seems yeah. effortless. It's like, oh, that dude ain't doing nothing, and then you see dude on the ground hurt. You know what I'm saying? Can he hit him oh, all? You see him with this, the this, knife. You watching a master <laughs> on the side at, of the dome. Yeah, I was just that. Yeah, that that Mark <laughs> when he came through with it with the with the big head and bull. It, it's one of those things, man. <laughs> it, it's it's man. beautiful. It's, it's almost like watching, back in the day, watching Kobe, man, just that fourth quarter, ISO play, get out the way, win the game. It's, it's a wrap. It's watching Tiger Woods hit that last putt, man, to, to seal a victory, man, at the Masters. You watching a dude just effortlessly do what he was born to do that and put on his that earth. That was pre-phone. Pre Tiger though, when he was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, uh, 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 hey, uh, don't call uh, Melissa. Uh, don't call the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you just, uh, just change your phone number. Uh, but again, you know what I'm saying? It's a it's a master class. Let's be clear. Uh, again, Indeed. Nas is just, it, it, and it's not fair to all your legacy artists as far as like top five was saying because it's like, okay, if Nas is doing this easily, why can't others do it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so again, it's not fair because Nas is just on, it's, he's just, cause again, the other thing with Nas is we thought after Khalees left his ass, he was done. He had 40,000 on his head a month for child support. Mm -hmm. He was he, done. They left man. him for dead. <laughs> this nigga came back and just murdered the game and he made his money not off a of rap. Let's be clear. Right. So a lot of cats don't respect. That's why him and Hit Boy, I think, really had a grudge because a lot of producers don't respect Hit Boy. They're like, oh, you just making stuff that we made and you just making it sound like Pete Rock. You making it sound like DJ Premier, but that's not you though. You just making you making up stuff. Y'all just making uh, what what did Jay say? You making uh, tunes. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So again, like I said, <laughs> it's just a testament to uh, to Nas. I'm not I'm not a Nas fanboy. It's just seeing a master at work. Right. Right. It's Quincy Jones uh, when he's in front of an orchestra. You know what I mean? So, again, man, salute to Nas, man. Salute to everybody at Mass Appeal. You can give us a check. 
You know what I'm saying? We got the cash app, top five, <laughs> cash app up in there too. And like I said, hey man, if you are just tuning in or you've been tuning in, we got a top five rap website on the platform. Let's be clear. Mm-hmm. LA on, West man. Coast, New yeah, York, Coast, Miami, Miami. to you, brother. Atlanta, Houston, man, stand up Chicago, man. If you're not following him, man, you you have to question Follow yourself as man. a hip hop fan. You know, let's be A-S-A-P. clear. You really do. Yeah, like youtube.com slash top five rap website and while we on the nas topic before we move on like it's these okay. nas and hip-hop projects it it helps me remember like yo okay i'm not just hating on everything and being a sourpuss like because i, I listen to these nas projects and i like them other stuff i listen to, i'm like it's mid so it, it helps remind myself like okay <laughs> it's not just me hating on everything there were some of the, like there was one nas project that he did with hip boy that i liked less than the others I wouldn't say I didn't like it, but I think it was King's Disease 2, yeah, man. which was whichever one had the red album cover. That it was wasn't with, with Death Row East. That was part mm-hmm. two, Death Row East. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good, but I liked it less. Magic was my favorite. And yeah, that Magic is like my favorite moment in hip hop since like 2018. That was a great, great. Man, that's the wow. best Nas Hit Boy track. Magic one. And it, and Again, it like, came to out me, right on Christmas, too. Out of nowhere, too. Well, yeah, and it, that's the thing, too, man. That Nas and Hit Boy whole trilogy just can, to me level set my expectations. You know what I'm saying a little bit. Like, hey man, yeah. like, like you said, I'm not going crazy. People can still make classic joints after 50 or after mm. 49. Mm. Again, man, what's rapper? Are you saying, man, I can't wait to hear his bars after 49. Under yeah, 3,000 acts like you can't rap. I got some smoke yeah. for under 3,000 too. He be acting like you too old to rap and this and that. Like, come on, man. Like, stop it. Right. Stop right. it. Hey, man, I, you, I like can, hit, you can hit them sound effects, cuz go ahead, hit them sound effects, cuz. Indeed. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, hit it, man. So, I'm talking about you, top yeah. five. You can hit that, hit the soundboard on there. Oh, hit time. that flag. Yeah, I can hit my flag. My <laughs> academic. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Under three thousand. If you're watching, I don't know. You, he's probably in New York somewhere with a stick, like Kendrick said. Under three. <laughs> it's not under three three K with a stick. Whatever he said. But he be acting like he can't rap sometimes. Like he's too old. Like I don't know what to rap about. But Nas, okay, yeah, everybody not Nas. I, I feel you. Well, uh, Miss LB is yeah, asking how old you are. How old am I? Guess. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna let you know. Just guess. Just guess. Let me know how young I Ms. look. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll see what's going. On. Uh, but like but, I said, uh, man, salute, man, salute to Nas. Salute yeah, to, for, this this video man. was dope. Uh, don't be eating and watch it because you're gonna get sick. Uh, yeah, man, we gonna yeah, man, yeah, yeah, hit the hit the soundboard, cause we gonna have a dueling soundboard. Dueling uh, soundboard, du- du- stop yeah. it, yeah. Mama. Never them dueling <laughs> pianos and dueling <laughs> soundboards. <laughs> uh, he's uh, she said twenty seven. 31, yeah. 31. Okay, 92. Okay, okay. There you okay. go. Okay, Mr. Okay. 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 Miss LB showing some love. Oh, man, I'm going to man in the building. I got one. Imagine they would throw their range in there, though. 25 to 30, like it's an application. She said, you look about 30. Like it's a survey. The women want to know are you single? I'm not single. Okay, there you go. Hey, man. Okay. Bebo P's the only single one up here. So, ladies, DM Um. You can subscribe. Subscribe to my yeah, YouTube. Yeah, definitely I, I flirt back. I'm, I'm not single, but I flirt back. There you, hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, this is the thing, man. Uh, speaking man of flirting back. Hold oh, on, oh, turn boy. me. I thought you were gonna have that uh, <laughs> dead looking version. <laughs> the box version of, of Sus. Oh uh, yeah, I got a new one. You made you made fun of my last graphic. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> we gonna get we gonna get top five in trouble tonight. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hold on, hold on. Let me play this video real quick, man. Hold on, so y'all know what's going down. Fair use. Fair use, my G. Home has been trashed during the military level. Hey, what's up? I'm A-Dub, and you gotta check this out. So leaked footage obtained by TMZ shows that federal- Nigga, them teddy bears on the bed. Did he get molested too? <laughs> Damn. <Stretch. laughs> the teddy bear's like, nigga, what happened, bro? And they got another teddy bear. This is weird. Uh, what's it, an ice cream cone on the floor? What is it? Nigga, may have a, ch- a chocolate uh, tip on the joint. Items and belongings strewn <laughs> everywhere. It is not known where the footage originates from, but drawers can be seen pulled open, documents lying everywhere, safes broken into, and computers torn apart. A close-up of a computer shows that the... Nigga got them over. You know this, you know this Diddy's room because he got them little runners in there. You know what I mean? The hard drives right. have been removed. The that that was open and broken was into in the house. Was Ooh, pictured yeah. observing the situation from the sidewalk. Diddy has since Fair broken his use, silence about the raids, describing them as a witch hunt based on meritless accusations. In a statement to Hip Hop DX, his attorney Aaron Dyer said, 
Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs. So leaked footage obtained by teams. <laughs> Top five. That's some young girl I'm talking about Diddy. That's the sound of it. Um, <laughs> dang. It's crazy. Allegedly, it's this is all crazy. alleged, by the way. Uh, this is right. for educational purposes only. Right. Uh, top five. We grew up on them. We did. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, we grew did. up on them. You know what I mean? Huge pause. <laughs> <laughs> the pause. No, di no Diddy. You know what I'm saying? No Diddy. And man. this thing, it's no disrespect to Diddy, we we just covering topics from hip hop. This is a hip hop like legend when it comes to crafting hip hop from the 90s, right? So again, we gotta talk about him. This is like if something happened to, you know, somebody from the Ghetto Boys or something like that. Well, maybe kind of um, but the question is, is, is it a rap for Diddy? Like, is there any way he can wiggle out? And also being a Pac fan, is this some karma? Because again, a lot of this stuff didn't start until Keefe D got caught. And basically was over here capping, talking about the million dollars that went to zip. You know what I'm saying? So is this basically just trumped up charge on a black man? <coughs> or is this some other hmm. stuff, man, that is just in the works? Again, this the raid happened on the anniversary of uh of the Biggie record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, What's I don't think thought, it's I, I don't think it's karma for for Tupac. Tupac's own murder was karma for what he did, and I love Damn, Tupac. But Tupac's man. like he jumped a crib that night in Vegas and got killed. Like it was a known crib. He was a known killer. Like you was in some gang business that you had no business being in, hanging with a bunch of bloods, and you decided to go jump this guy and he killed you. So that that's his own thing. I don't well, think. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me hold up with you real quick. Mm -hmm. So remember, Puff put a hit on. He said, I want, a, I want a death row chain, so bring me back one, because the only people who have them are people that are close to him. Okay. Uh, the lane cat had one and got, they took his chain in the mall, right? Yeah, you and talking so, about Vegas? Yeah. Right. So because, allegedly, because of what Keefe D said, that Puff wanted the chain, somebody got their chain took. Lane told Pac about his chain getting snuck, took, and it was a dude in Vegas, so... Isn't that kind of like a puzzle piece a little bit? I guess, I guess you could look at it that way, but I think Pac would have lived a little bit longer if he would have just mm. stayed out of the gang business. Even if the people he was with, the bloods he was with, wanted to do something, you could he could have let them do it. He probably would have still lived. But I mean, it was it's a pretty in L.A. in California, everyone kind of knew already what happened to him. Right, we've known this for years, but then Vlad kind of put connected the dots with the specifics. But everyone pretty much knew who did it and, and when it happened um, at the time. Right. But with the Diddy thing, um, I don't I don't think it's trumped up charges on a black man. Uh, mm. Diddy, man, I have, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Diddy is, um, I don't think it's trumped up charges on a black man. I think, and I also say this, careful of how crazy you talk, about, mm. and not just y'all, anybody, people in the chat, mm. about about this situation because your favorite might be next. 50 Cent say, if you've been following 50 Cent, he's saying Jay-Z might be, Jay-Z's my favorite rapper. He's saying Jay-Z, like a lot of these people who are in this mainstream like tier, I don't think you get there without doing some spooky kind of stuff. And Diddy is obviously in that tier. He's got private jets, he's got a huge house. I think they all got a little something that, that may or may not come out. And also, Gene Deal, if you've been following Gene Deal and Reggie mm -hmm. and Reggie White, they've been saying this stuff. Reggie. Mm -hmm. I'll say, let's get our no Diddy jokes off now because Reggie White, he knew Diddy. He's saying Diddy the type of guy who will off himself. Being put in a situation, he said recently, Diddy's the type of guy in this situation, he will off himself. Yeah, Reggie, bomb first, salute. Right, so no Diddy, I mean, it's, it's, it's trending, it's got momentum, I like it. But let's get all the no Diddy jokes off now before it becomes non politically correct. Fact. That's all I'll say. Fact. <laughs> uh, no, top five's 100 on this joint. Right. Jay Kent, Bebo P in the chat. What do you think? And again, this is why we kind of started off by saying, hey, man, again, is it just, you know, them 
push the black. Because again, I ain't never heard nobody on his level having military dudes come into the yeah. house by coastal homes yeah. being raided. And again, we understand the game. We understand what Diddy been doing. You know what I'm saying, let's be clear. Um, but well, on, on, on wait, the wait. military thing, not to cut you off, on the military thing, that's how that's that's um, par for course. Especially mm -hmm. like, so for instance, DJ Academics, he got his crib raided over a, over yeah, a search yeah, word. Yeah, 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 but right, because right, the right. people, the feds already know Academics owns a bunch of guns, so they're not going to come into your house. And I'm sure Diddy does, and people who live there does as well. So they're not just going to come into your, the feds aren't going to come into your house with nothing when they know you have guns or you could have guns. They're going to come prepared like for anything. And yeah, they raided both of his houses while he was on the jet. Like the feds don't, it's like, they're like almost like, sorry to the religious people. It's like Jesus. When they come, they already know everything about you. They know everything you've done. So like he's pretty much toast. It just depends on how well his lawyers do or how much he pays into the system. However, that works for him to get maybe some type of plea. But the Fed's not going to come when, unless they already know they've got every, all their ducks in, in a row. And they nice. raided both of his houses as his jet was in the air. Like, like, bro, they are very organized about this. And they're not just going to come and spend all this money. All those people you saw there, all the vehicles, cost money. Cost money. So they're not going to spend all that money. If, they, if they're not 100% sure, like they've already ran the case in their head. They already have all their evidence to even get a search warrant requires so much to get a search warrant. And they got search warrant on what, two or three houses? Yep, New York, Miami, and uh, the LA situation, you know what I mean? So, I mean, so come on, man. Like, like there's a lot of innocent black people who, who get done wrong. Diddy is not one of them. Mm. Facts. Facts! Uh, okay, hey, yeah, keep this soundboard going. Um, <laughs> Antoine 1486 is saying the uh, salute with the two dollar high. He going crazy in the paint, man. You know what I'm saying? We might, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He going hard in the paint, man. Uh, he's saying the feds known about Diddy for years. Why now though, J Camp? Can you kind of answer that as you kind of, you know, man, swagging a little bit? You know what I mean? We've always seen the feds go in on people when they're vulnerable. Mm. You know what I'm Pause. saying? When they so when, the when there's a crack, no Diddy. When there's a crack in the armor, so to speak. Yeah. And he's already got boatloads of of suits sitting out there you know what i'm saying i mean that there's court cases on his head multiple you know so it only takes somebody from the from the federal government just who gets antsy want to make a name for themselves to get interested in it but i mean human trafficking though is like a diff it's a completely different type of crime though you know what i mean so yeah man um I mean, this this is. They may not have found anything yesterday, or uh, whenever the raid took place, but we know they have something though. Like they, again, I think Deuce made a said it or somebody else. Like when 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 they own that ass, like they have something. I mean, same thing with uh, Young Thug. Again, <laughs> mm -hmm. they were following that for a minute. You know what I mean? So right, right. They got something. It, it and. Now they got all these witnesses they about to they about to interview. Oh, it's about yeah. to be a done deal because they're gonna tell them where all the bones are buried. You know what I'm saying? Got facts. All the skeletons, where they hid. All the pigs. So it's just a matter of time. It's just oh, a matter boy. of time. The first kick in the door was just like kind of like the that was the, the shot to the ribs. It was a kidney shot. This next kick one, in the though, door, wave in the four four, four four on the anniversary of that song. Man, they kick right, in the door. On now. They kick in the Ooh. door, man. The next one might be that might be that dome shot. Mm. Oh. <sighs> again, like Top Five said, man, like because again, we they they saw him at the airport supposedly and all the other stuff. They had did he cut, turn your mic, cut, turn your camera off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> turn the niggas camera out. Cut the niggas out. Uh, Bebo P. Um, Again, like I said, we we not making fun of anything with any of the people who are legend stuff. We not making fun of the fan because again, this is somebody's fan. This is somebody's dad. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Like when I saw uh, King Combs in them in handcuffs, that's when they get real. And the fans are taking pictures of your face. You know what I'm saying? Like BMOP, what's your thoughts on this, man? Because again, man, this is one of our icons, man. Like we came front, regardless of what's going on in his bedroom. Like, this is one of the icons we grew up on. This is one of the dudes I wanted to be like when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he pushed family. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it might have been a little different, but what 
I was sold at the time was family. Hey, this thing, salute to Nizi Myrick. We interviewed Nizi Myrick, one of the salute, hit boys, yeah. one of the hit men, excuse me. Uh, and, he, and he basically told us, man, the walk with him, Harvey, and Puff starting everything with Bad Boy. And it was organic. He told us about the day that they went back in the studio when Big died and they had to go do the Missing You joint. I miss, yeah, the, the I Miss You joint. Like, this is real, this is history, you know what I'm saying, of one mm -hmm. of our folklore dudes. Bebo P, what's your thoughts on just the situation that happened this week? And is, is this a change of the guard of hip hop where we don't see um, gatekeepers or dudes of this nature on this status anymore? You know what I'm saying? Would it ever be another Diddy? That era is dying away ever so fast it seems damn iceberg time's up for the yeah time's up for the rainbow diddler and uh <laughs> with him knowing that he's officially the negro version of epstein version 2.0 though uh I, yeah hold up hold up real quick God. mama bear with the koofy too <laughs> i'm putting koofies out today <laughs> okay keep going nah i remember saying around the time that Diddy was utilizing his connections to get Travis Scott back into the graces of the award show oh, that Diddy was right. on his it was, it was all good just a week ago. What did Travis Scott have to Damn, do? Damn, he was like, yeah, I'm putting it back on. Yeah, he on the Billboard joint. Right, right. Yeah, nigga, and now I, you he, on spin the block. Now you over here. Wow. Right, right. Travis and he was Scott on his last leg back one. then. Back then. At that time, he was on his last leg. I also mm -hmm. remember saying just a few short months ago that when you go after a multi Billion with a B. Say that again. Billion. Though. When you go after a multi, that's beyond. Welcome to the liquor folks. business, my nigga. Right. When you company. go after a multi-billion-dollar valuated company, and you're threatening to sue them as the listed billionaire Negro puppet that you are, mm -hmm. that only prompts such entities to just put in that phone call, just one yep. at least. Yeah. Talked about that. Just one call. Is all it takes. Hey, Cassie. And we ain't talking about Ghostbusters. Uh, yeah. That call uh, I, going to. <laughs> right, right. Who you gonna call? First, Cassie. Ain't going to Peter, da, 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 da. Going to Peter Vankman. And, and right, right. <laughs> what, That's what all thing, it takes from that that ilk to well, ruin five, the rest five, of your was life. This, was this an avalanche thing? Was this uh the whole Cassie ain't gonna sue me? Forget her. Cause I remember this thing. I remember at the BET Awards where Sexy Red was uh, twerking in front of Bobby Jones Gospel. He had said when he got when he received an award there, he said salute to Cassie for being there in my dark times and bull. You know what I'm saying? He gave her props. Yeah. So it's just an avalanche of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Not just the Cassie bull, not just the the escapades and bull. You know what I mean? With the Kofi. I, I I think it's definitely coordinated. Okay. Again, when you uh, J. Kim said this earlier. The feds are gonna get you when you're most vulnerable. So they know Diddy got. I mean, yeah. I I don't want to come with the conspiracies because what this. I think everybody pretty much knew. It's like Vince McMahon with the WWE. When he got recently, <laughs> hit, you know, his thing came out. Nobody is surprised that Vince McMahon yeah, was doing right. foul shit. Right. Fact, right. fact, yeah. Right. No one is like, oh, he didn't do that. Like, and I think it's the same with Diddy. Like, I, I think pretty much everyone pretty much knew Diddy was on foul timing. So I, I don't think it's a, oh, Diddy was about to buy NBC. You know how they yeah, say some Cosby type bull. Yeah, right. no, he, yeah, no, he was, yeah, he, was yeah. on, he was on some foul timing. So I, mm. I think he's got what's coming to him. But like Jim J. Kim said, the fans are going to come at you when you're most vulnerable. So I, the fans to even raid right now, to raid, to raid, like get a search warrant and complete everything, have all the evidence lined up to even get that passed through the courts. They've been working on this for years. Yes. You're probably talking about 2015, 2016. They've been building mm -hmm. this. So yes, it may have. be, it may be coordinated to where, in a way where, okay, Cassie does this, this person does, like, all these allegations come out in a sequence, then the feds come, because the feds know you got to settle with this person, you got to settle with this person, you're not going to, you're going to have significantly less money to defend yourself against us. So it may be coordinated in that way, but I don't want to throw out any conspiracy theories that, that even suggest innocence from Diddy, because again, it's like the Vince McMahon thing, it's like the Rob Schneider thing. Notice these are all white men. I'm naming Harvey Weinstein. No one is yeah, surprised man. about this. I think I think he's done some foul stuff, and the chickens coming to roost. 
Damn. You're right, man. Uh, simply put, Diddy did this to himself at the end of the day. Not right. sure how things are plan out or pan out Being legally arrogant. for him. But yeah, it's beat. that arrogance, it's what that ego. Um, you guys said it best as well. When it, when it comes to those alpha bu- alphabet boys coming after you, they have their intel and they likely, highly likely have legitimate probably more than <laughs> enough legitimate <laughs> intel in order to uh, play time, chess so. and to um you know to to pin you down so yep. it it's things will never be the same for diddy we'll see what how I'm things saying, transpire you know because there's always developments you know on a daily basis ever since the raid happened but nonetheless it's it's looking like it could be a wrap for well and this is the thing too diddy. man i think top five said it uh for the for the Biblical cats up in here, man. Pride come before the destruction. You know what I'm saying? You say that again, brother. For the pride people. come yeah. before destruction. So again, yep. When you bet, like this thing, uh, you get mad at Casamigos because they saying it in the song and the record, but then homie basically like they cultivated their brand. You know what I'm saying? Diageo was like, man, this, we, this nigga gave us a thousand dollars. Right. He talking about he owns something. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here with this bull. You know what I'm saying? Jenny, my smack. So. <laughs> And then it then obviously it turns into the whole cashy situation. And again, let's be clear, he had a he had a mansion in Atlanta that he moved out of because he said he's heard the ghost of Biggie in that joint. Mm-hmm. And it and it hits on Biggie's anniversary, a life after death. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Yeah, probably from that Zaddy yeah, bottom shelf powder. Powder, uh, yeah. powder. I need the fact sound. I need the fact sound. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but top five, what right. you thinking, though, man? Like, there's, go ahead, and take us home. No man, budget sugar joint, booger. Man. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, take us home, top five. All yeah, man. I, I, I say this, man. The fans come like people. Are, people want to. There are times where you should use the black man argument, defending black people. They're doing black people wrong. This ain't that. The fans come right. in military trucks because they know what's in the house. They know your capabilities. They know you probably have security there. They're not gonna come. If there's gonna be any type of resistance, they're going to win, that's facts. Number two, yes, his kids were handcuffed. Mm. We call them kids, they're adult men. Yeah. That is protocol. Like Fact, the, yeah. the Officers have to protect themselves when they come into the house. You are going to get unhandcuffed. But for now, as we conduct our search in this mansion, which is going to take probably hours and hours all day to search, you are going to be handcuffed. It's just facts. That's facts. facts. So it's not a black thing. It's not a they're doing the black man wrong. I just hate, like, there are times where you, where that is absolutely true. This is not one of those times. Mm -hmm. Facts. Uh, again, like I said, man, this, the saga, the saga, uh, what was one of his albums? The saga continues or something like that. Yeah, the saga yeah, continues with continue. some of this stuff, man. Yep, again, sure. uh, he says sex I, trafficking. Who knows what it, what the thing is, Miss LB? The thing about sex trafficking is, it's not always what we think it is. It has a very mm, specific definition in, yeah. in the law. So if you're sending women across state lines to yeah, have sex right. and they're getting paid and they mm-hmm. claim it's against their will. Which is literally what's being alleged. That's considered sex trafficking. R. Kelly, R. Kelly basically had a woman who wanted, who he found on tour, and she came with him, and that's considered pause. sex trafficking. Cause he mm-hmm. pause, you know what I'm saying? And so that, like nowadays, if you if you have a girlfriend, 18, and you yeah. say, hey, like, come what, over to 15? another state, <laughs> right? Well, either, right. No, either or. And I'm saying just j- in general, it could be yeah. any age of a woman. If right. you say, hey, come from Alabama to well, over here, her out. right? Yeah, and fly her and flew her out. That's considered sex trafficking. So right. again, the laws yep. are a little different if you really look into it. We're not saying anybody's innocent or guilty. It's just, right. hey man, the thing is going to play out. Again, he'll have his day in court. Unlike R. Kelly, uh, Hannibal Kales, <laughs> Diddy actually has money to actually fight this stuff. Because again, Kales basically had to sell his publishing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he ain't got right. nothing. He was doing cruises and bull, man. He was doing bar, bar, dive bars and bull at the time. So again, like I said, uh, DNA, he would have done it. He yeah. Done it. So again, like I said, salute to everybody in the chat, man. Again, this is a serious situation mm-hmm. involves a lot of people, man. This is some Epstein kind of bull. You know what I'm saying? It's a Madoff, Epstein. It's it's about a lot of players involved. And again, everybody's quiet because it could be your favorite rapper that has a going on next. So you need to be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like Top Five said, man. It could be anybody, because again, at that time, there wasn't no internet. There was that was barely AOL dial-up and boo. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, 
They was on this You can do some of this Juno. crazy bull, you know what I'm saying? And this think it never happened. Why, why, why you think the, the freak neat joint came out so late? Uh, Yolanda Adams and then was trying to make sure we ended up in that joint. Facts. She was trying to make sure we didn't see nothing. Busting that bussy open. Right. Them cheeks out. She said, I don't want y'all to see this. <laughs> <laughs> you was hanging with Trina? Getting them clapped. I'm seeing some of these sound effects too, top five. So long story short, man. Again, we just covering the news, bro. You know, we're not exploiting nobody, man. Again, the other thing too is Lil Rod Pauls. Man, come on. He been, he been so much Lil Rod, my nigga. Lil Bucci Rod. Really uh, no, Pauls. he put in. Uh, <laughs> so it's not even it's a black man no more. He put in uh, Harry Prince. Put in uh, uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. He. Wow. Yep. Well, I'm surprised Trey wasn't in that joint. You know, Meek radio Mill. was on. Hannibal you know, Trey and Bunny Hop and Meek Mill. Stuff. Right. So again, like like yeah, Top Five said, man, too. It, can be anybody, it could be anybody. It could be anybody next, man. Like Top Five said. Diddy's human toilet. Uh, Young Miami's on that in that legal paperwork. <laughs> oh, I, like the, I like when he pees on me. I like. <laughs> he likes his cocaine paint. Uh, we won't be on, uh, our, our, our podcast will be shut down next week you'll be on top five's uh channel you know? right right <laughs> um, <laughs> did he do it and then the other thing too 50 cent man trolling crazy of course he making a doc man um man and then again he's 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 putting horse heads in people's bed right now you know what i'm saying so, he going man. crazy so again this is deep, man. We we'll be talk, talking about it, but again, man, yeah, the Harry Prince dog. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Prince Harry and Boo. Yep, that's uh, facts too. And, yeah. and let's be clear. <laughs> Go, hey, this he thing. Go, Google Prince, it, man. Yeah. We got we got intelligent people in the chat. <laughs> Google what they were looking for in Diddy's house. A lot of rich people will have cameras in the house. Our regular people have cameras in the house, but they have a hard drive in there. What right. most celebrities like Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? Clive, brother. those kind of cats, they have the sh their streaming cameras and they stream to another country so you can't extradite the footage. Mm -hmm. Why you think mm -hmm. the plane was in that little country, but Diddy was in Miami still? Damn, that cloud. Push them joints and make sure them joints is good. You know what I'm saying? So again, we Man. don't put the koofy on, but put on a little bit tonight. <laughs> Anyway, man, Top Five, take us home, man. man. We appreciate Top Five coming through, man. Show some love, for man. Real, Hit the real, cash app, man. man, for our brother. Yep, yep. YouTube.com top slash Top Five Rap website. YouTube.com Top Five Rap website and Top Five Rap website.com. You already know what's going on. Okay. Oh, that's man. all I got. Come on, man. Come on. And let's be clear. Who made this beat, though? Let's see if Top Five know who made this beat. Ski, ski, That's right? Ski on the beat. This on Campo second joint? Nah, this is a uh, John Blaze. Yeah, John really? Oh, uh, that Fat Joe, Nas, Rock him. Uh, the posse cut. Yeah, the yeah. posse cut. Uh, Raekwon. Okay, yeah. you just ski beat. Yeah, ski beat joint. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, ski. I, I, was like, I had to go. I had to yeah. end check, it with ski. Check yeah, that out, man. Plus, John Blaze. Yeah, man. That crazy. joint. Oh, uh, change. But top every, five, every man. Every verse on there. Every verse is crazy. Oh, yeah. I put the I put it's the uh, uh, love us, cash app in. The, I put his cash app in the joint. Please mother. bless our bless our brother. We will be doing it as well. Again, go to his channel, subscribe. Uh, man, this dude is honestly real talk, man. One of the best dudes in the game. If Absolutely. you love hip hop, if you love how cats break bars down, review albums. If you're an independent artist and you want to get your, your joint review, Paul, holla at top five rap website, man. Again. We salute you, brother. Salute, Jay Camp, Bebo P, take us home, man. Yeah, man. Salute the top five all day. Appreciate you, brother, for hopping on today. Pause Rocking out with his paws, you know. <laughs> um, man, salute to the chat as always, man. First of all, good to be back in the building, man. Yeah, come on. Man. Good to be yeah. back stateside. Back, too, Jay man. Camp. Man, good to be we back. Had to take Diddy overseas. We know what it is. Man, 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 man. <laughs> Just came back good, fresh man, from my Antigua. Antigua. Yeah, Antigua. <laughs> man, I wish it was Antigua. But nah, I ain't, I ain't been in Antigua, but, but yeah, B-Bo-P, man, take us home, man.
Hey, Lane top five, fine, we bro. appreciate you for rocking with us uh, for the first time. And don't be a stranger. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You're, you're, in fact, you. you're not a stranger no more now yeah, that you've man. been on. Yeah, now uh, you can come in the house. You can wash dishes, man. You can vacuum right. before we start passing right. out. You got to take your like shoes that. off. Yeah, you just come right on in, man. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. Uh, J Camp, uh, again, welcome back, man, to the Fresh Out platform. You know what I'm saying? Iceberg. Great job on the uh, hosting as usual. And thank you all as well for rocking with us. And uh, definitely go to support Top 5 if you haven't or, you know, you've never heard of him. You know what I'm saying? Definitely go to that brother's YouTube page, website, and all of his online platforms. Support the brother because he definitely kills it when it comes to online hip-hop commentary. Uh, with that said, shout out to our lovers. Uh, shout out to our haters. And with yeah. that said... Um, Peace, God bless, and uh, catch us next rip. Iceberg, land this soul plane, hey man, not the love, thing, not man, the love air talk, plane, man. not it's not Easter. love air, but the soul plane. It's not Easter weekend, air. man. Like I said, man, if you ain't called your mama, your daddy, if they still living, if you right. if you ain't talked to your grandparents, man, again, this platform is built off of family. Then it's Facts. built. Then the next step is hip hop. Let's be clear. Come on, make now. sure you talk to your family, call them cats, make sure they're good. And family mm -hmm. is not who you related to. That's relatives. That's blood. Your family is who you talk to every day that rocks with you, and it's loyalty. You know what I'm Say saying? That. So, Getting again, loyalty is family, bro. Make sure you call everybody, check on them, make sure they're good. Mm -hmm. Even the strong need to be checked on, man. So, again, suit to everybody. And like I said, that's why we ended it, man. Like, you know, we praying for Diddy, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no hate. You know what I'm saying? But if you got something going on, you're going to pay the maker. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But, again, J. Camp, top five, man. Bebo P. Much love Ice to the Berg chat, Slim. man. We love y'all, man. Mm -hmm. Iceberg Slim, you know what's going down, man. We'll check you. Hey, man, uh, top five stay on too, man. But salute y'all, man. Have a good night, man. Peace. We'll see y'all next week. Salute. Eat some food. Eat some Peace. fried chicken. Let's go. World's most dangerous podcast. We will be in the building with the world. Like the world is going down, man. And let's get it. Good, let's get it. I'm going up in this field. 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 I'm going Fresh out is here, ain't no tiptoeing. The competition running like they Jesse Owens. Please believe Dookie, this is our moment. Be hard in the paint, boy, Kevin Looney. I told Iceberg, please hand the koofy. I'm not a newbie. You will never catch my feet in the bad boy jacuzzi. Stop it. That's that sus piss. We live beat. We want the real smoke. And be careful, it's kind of cutthroat. The chat going ham, they just might make you get out like Melvin in the blue nose. Stop it. People, he's a hater. Before J Camp, this has been the first.